1st of the 1st, 2019. As 2019 begins, so does my heavily reminiscent project dedicated to each individual day of the year. To express why I want to undertake this challenge, I believe would be harder than the actual year-long commitment of a photo a day and an analysis of that photo. I long for some sort of discovery I would have never become aware of without doing this. In my lead-up project to this called September 2018, it gave me a strong appreciation for my life and the people around me. I estimate the biggest theme of this experiment will be teenagehood and its inevitable end. As a 19 year old, it is commonly accepted that it is your last year before becoming an adult. Another reason I'm endeavouring this project comes after a realisation that due to this being such a big part of my year and it constantly being on my mind, I'm inevitably going to remember it for a long time. I believe I'll have a strong urge throughout my later life to look back on the simple happy times. It's built strong memory connections to each day that I feel once I watch later, many synapses will rendezvous and will allow me to remember a lot more of my past than the average person. 2019 begins on a different level I have never experienced it on before. The countdown was led by an artist titled Pinau at the event Beyond the Valley, a five-day festival in the hills of Lardner Park. I was led to go for the social aspect rather than the lineup, though my opinions changed on many of the artists. I traversed with a bunch of locals from Bayside area and camped with them. I undeniably built a stronger relationship with many of these people. I expressed my gratitude for they were such good company, making me laugh and giving me another perspective on what friends can be. Though this day was not as enjoyable as the rest due to the pack up, immense heat and the weight, the seconds revolved around the transition from 2018 to 2019 was some of the best seconds of my life. Thanks to the moments of Luke Miller placing me on his shoulders allowing me to see an ocean of ecstatic humans reaching peak levels of happiness, intense lights and visuals, Briley Burns dancing right next to me, intoxication of an illegal sort and a New Year's kiss. After a nap, we adventured through the abandoned campsite and witnessed a large amount of left items. Shout out Millie Tanner for driving us home. 2nd of the 1st, 2019. A day of depleted serotonin, reflection of the festival and a slow day at work. This image is my house of 18 years defined by its mild size, limestone walls, man shed, and well-crafted garden. It is something that pushes me through the days, keeping me hopeful I will finish the day in a safe haven. As I age, the impending possibility of moving brews closer. This thought scares me, yet simultaneously excites me, running away from comfort and familiarity, but also isolation and repetition. So many memories located here. Third of the first, 2019. As I enter 2019, I continue my journey working at Seclunas, a fruit and vegetable shop. I feel nonchalant about the job majority of the time, except for summertime, due to the amount of tourists that complicate the job. Seeing as it is just a means to an end, I see myself staying there for another year due to accessibility, which will make it my fifth year. As mundane and as wasteful as the job seems, I can appreciate the fact I've learned so many social skills, built my character, witnessed some of the funniest things there, and made many friends. This particular day of work had nothing noteworthy to write about, and I wish to stop talking about this topic. 4th of the 1st, 2019. Another day, another dollar. How to pull meaning from another plain day at work. Trick question, I can't. I had to put up with a customer who wanted a refund for an item that she thought was overdate. After informing her that it in fact wasn't, she still insisted on a refund. Without a receipt and with the typical personality of an older white woman, Portsea City tourist, I passed her on to someone else. Quinn, left in frame, a fellow co-worker of nearly four years. Spending so much time together has led us to constantly saying the same thing at the same time. Our humour is identical and he knows how to keep a conversation going. Ruby, right in frame, only has recently started working here but we became instantly close. She is the craziest chick I've ever met and has a non-competable amount of energy. 5th of the 1st, 2019. After another slow day at work, what pushed me through is the knowledge I would be hanging out with Sophie Williams. First impressions of Sophie were not promising, due to a lack of understanding of her out there and unfuckwithable attitude. What I quickly came to realise was Sophie had something in her that I had not seen in many others, a special sort of charisma. Sophie earns the honour of being the funniest chick I know, due to her oddball, sarcastic and self-aware humour. She has a noteworthy appreciation for friendship. Our decision for dinner was a picnic at the park. We struggled to find stereotypical picnic style food. We chinwagged and threw around a netball which felt like an exercise I hadn't participated in years. She topped my night by coming back to mine to have another delightful d and 6 of the 1st, 2019 In frame is my local cinema, Sereno Athanium, where I like to enjoy my favourite pastime, seeing movies on the big screen. One of my 2019 goals is to go to the movies once a week, financially unwise, but mentally wise. I went to see The Favourite, directed by Yorgos Lanthimos, one of my favourite directors. 
I went with my mate Jay Hodgson, who I've mentioned last year for his distinct taste and quirkiness. 7th of the 1st, 2019. On this day, a bunch of friends and I went to an outdoor cinema in Portsea, where we watched Pulp Fiction. After having watched this film 10 plus times, I would expect to find it tedious, though I still discovered new things. What made it better was that it was Neve's first viewing, which allowed me to help her understand some parts. The pros of setting up blankets, pillows, snuggling up, eating popcorn, watching a great film and doing it with friends outweighed the cons of having to bring materials and sitting in the freezing cold. In frame is Neva Mill Marsh, Suede Crowd, Jacob Maynard, Mitchell Shearer, aka Minnie, Lockie Glover, and Jacob Chipperfield, aka Chipper. A group built through high school and held together by devotion. 8th of the 1st, 2019. Another day, another dinner with friends. Delphi Burgess, Sophie, and I sat at Rye Foreshore and ate dinner. We traversed a tourist ridden Rye where locals are rare and dickheads are common. We also traversed the local carnival. 9th of the 1st, 2019. My music station, record and CD player, where I spend 40% of my music listening time. I enjoy having a physical collection of my music. Vinyl holds no nostalgic value to me as I was raised in the era of the internet, yet I still feel this sense of sentiment. It is pretentious to say, but it feels pure. The crackling is a satisfying noise. 10th of the 1st, 2019. I took this sunny day by the balls and brought my canoe out. It is crazy that just down the road from me, I was able to paddle next to dolphins. I feel like such a fit cunt after doing this as I never do any other exercise. 11th of the 1st, 2019. A new restaurant in Rye opened up, which Abby Evans, Sophie, Swade and I decided to go to. With the theme of jukebox era as seen in the picture, it has the old style chairs, vinyls and retro posters. In mere disappointment, there was no apparent jukebox with a lot left to be longing. I do not want this to turn into me critiquing a restaurant as this doco is already wanky enough, but god damn, when you order a kitty's burger, I was not expecting a nickel sized third of a burger. 12th of the 1st, 2019. Pictured is Swade and Abby on a raggedy ferris at the Rye Carnival. Rusty, creaky and jumpy. If it is their intention to make it look like it is going to fall apart, they're doing a good job. Abby was introduced to me through the combination of work and Sophie. It seemed a challenge for her to befriend me, but I succeeded. Her maturity is beyond her age. 13th of the 1st, 2019. I began packing on this Sunday. I was under the impression I would also have the next day to pack as I thought my flight was at 10.55 p.m. Though to my surprise, though not a surprise to my intelligence, it was at 10.55 a.m. This led my packing experience to be rushed and stressful. 14th of the 1st, 2019. I started my journey on a delayed flight at 12 p.m. from Melbourne. My only complaint for the 14 hour flight was the pain in my legs. Other than that, I was treated like a descendant of a king and got to watch four movies. My current experience of America is limited to the airport as I have not left yet. I arrived at my Airbnb greeted by a large whiff of marijuana and some dazed hosts. After settling in, I got to enjoy greeting a diverse crew. An arrogant, materialistic young American, a spiritual guider, a pot smoking skater with failed dreams, an extremely good looking Norwegian girl, a tattoo artist Serbian and a mysterious old man. The weather greeted me with heavy rains, limiting my sightseeing. I quickly befriended Josh as I envied his bluntness in a way and he knew his way around. He introduced me to a chain of fast food restaurants at Costco with perplexing prices. Not perplexing when you realise what they actually used to make it with. The diversity and stark contrast of classes in the seating area felt off, with homeless people eating right next to the high class. Some pigeons are black and white. I purchased a large hot dog with a large drink and refillable for $1.50. The rest of the day was spent awkwardly socialising at the hostel. 15th of the 1st, 2019. No rain was present as of me getting up, so I utilised this for adventuring. My adventures included walking Venice Beach back streets littered with cosy, hippie, broken down shacks, Marina del Rey scattered with a clusterfuck of boats, Venice Beach deserted due to the choppy weather, Venice Beach boardwalk overrated as I expected, but a fun little arcade. Crows sound different. A wide variety of cars. Dispensary worker told me I could purchase weed underage if I needed to see a doctor, which is code work for a man in a suit who signs a paper. I purchased an individual slice of pizza, which is bigger than most small sized pizzas in Australia. Some houses on Venice Beach can only be entered by climbing a ladder. Josh is a guy from my hostel. I'm glad I got to experience the worst of American personalities first up making everyone else seem like angels. His fixation on women and gambling dwindles down his life to living in a hostel. 
I can't bear his arrogance, attitude, and the fact he can't comprehend why tourists want to sightsee even if the destination is boring. 16th of the 1st, 2019. Destination was Santa Monica shopping district. Majority of shops, prestigious. Watched a film at this 80s looking cinema. Went to the NBA to watch Utah Jazz vs LA Clippers. Don't know shit about basketball, just went for the experience. The atmosphere is next level. Lights, fireworks, cheerleaders, music, crowds yelling, shirt shooting cannons, build up songs, each countdown. Was peer pressured into standing up for the national anthem. It felt comical how serious everybody was taking it. People shouting when the lyrics Land of the Free were sung. Another notable was when they showed past troopers who were in the crowd to show them appreciation. Paid $100 for an Uber. 17th of the 1st, 2019. Went to IHOP for breakfast. A stack of pancakes with a big fuck off coffee. Walked to a record store where I purchased the likes of Simon and Garfunkel to Madonna to Herbie Hancock. Bought a William S. Burroughs CD, which confused me due to him being an author. Won't know for a couple of weeks whether it is music or other. A homeless man at McDonald's complimented my Pulp Fiction t-shirt. Tell me about his aspirations to do Pulp Fiction inspired wall murals. Final destination was downtown LA. Salted with concrete buildings and peppered with homeless. What redeemed it was the views from the US bank tower. City lights and bright traffic seem like they never end as the earth curves hide the rest. The last bookstore. A place where 30 minutes left of opening time is torture. Has nifty book inspired art and plenty of different sorts of books. 18th of the 1st, 2019. My last day in Venice Beach. Went for a final walk in the back streets. Low hanging trees, broken paths and failed dreams. Arrived in West Hollywood. Shabby, heavily Mexican populated. The owner has a chihuahua named Chewy. I think the dog and I are meant to be as I did not have an allergic reaction to him. 19th of the 1st, 2019. Went to the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Not hard to see its tackiness and how exploitative it can be. Those without homes sitting next to the names of those with too many homes. Shitty souvenir stores upon shitty souvenir stores. An oddly large amount of lingerie stores. The people dressed up as celebrities are more characters than those they are dressed up as. Stumbled across a record store that had a vast line, due to the store giving away free vinyls. I decided to go into the Church of Scientology to see what their personality test was about. After two hours of quizzing and a test from a metal machine, they deducted that I was depressed and irresponsible. I played on with their bullshit, pretending and admitting to all these conjured lies of flaws I have. They desperately tried getting me to pay for their program, but I wasn't ready to admit the Earth was going to be eaten by extraterrestrial beings just yet. Lastly, I went to the Amoeba Music Store, which was a very bad and good idea. Spent a lot of cashula, but do not regret it as of yet. 20th of the 1st, 2019. I had low expectations for Universal Studios. With the prejudice, it was aimed at kids. So I was surprised to see this well-crafted and thought-out theme park. It would be a lot better if it wasn't for all the little whiny cunt kids, those unaware of their surroundings, etc. I was nearly fully immersed in the Harry Potter section. There was so many little attention to details. A bit disappointed with the Simpsons section. Springfield was too cramped together. 21st of the 1st, 2019. Hike to the Hollywood sign and the Hollywood Reservoir. Don't understand people's urges to get photos in front of the sign and the views. You are just getting in the way of it. An estranged homeless man approached me showing me all these odd items he had found, including a corkscrew, compass and ring. He questioned their value, portraying them as treasures. Sadly, it would have been a couple of bucks for the lot. His humbleness and kindness disappointingly turned to unpleasantness as he asked if I wanted to drink tequila and smoke weed with him later on. 22nd of the 1st, 2019. Rendezvous, North Hollywood, 12pm. Staying at a luxurious hotel as a means to an end, as I have an early bus to get the next day. Treating myself to a king bed, even though peasant single beds do me fine. Went to see Shoplifters, a 2018 film directed by Kori Eda Hirokosu. An emotional ride that really questioned my value of family and pushed my morals. 23rd of the 1st, 2019. Destination San Francisco with an 8 hour bus ride. Escape from New York pizza, best I've ever had. Big size for good price. Just one of those days where I adjusted to a whole new town, new sights and new people. It still has that dinginess of Frankston. Beautiful sights of city whilst crossing a bridge. 24th of the 1st, 2019. Too early for a latte and pulled pork toasty as I quickly realised after digging in. 
once again went to more vinyl stores spending more money. Thus, I had to buy another suitcase to carry all my extra goodies. Went to the D. Young Museum where I witnessed old artifacts, old detail paintings, and modern trash. Stumbled across Grandview Park, amazing views of San Francisco City. 25th of the 1st, 2019. Experienced Alcatraz Island. Had a lot more of a history than I realized. Stood in one of the prison cells and I swear I could feel the island moving, like I was standing on a boat. Walked through the San Franciscan streets. Flat, connected and colourful houses aligned on the highly juxtapositioned roads of steep to flat. Found a vintage arcade in Fisherman's Wharf. The content of the machines ranged from early 1900s to early 2000s. From image slider machines to racing arcade machines. My mind is still boggled as to why the fuck people want to get photos of themselves in front of views. I thought being by myself on this journey I would do a lot of self-reflection, but I have not. I haven't grown in terms of anxiety when approaching social situations. 26th of the 1st, 2019. Visited the Golden Gate Bridge, a lot bigger and longer than I expected, about a 45 minute walk. Went to the Amoeba Music Store in San Fran, spending more dollars. I was surprised by the little amount of fat people I've been seeing, seeing as it's America. I then realised it's because I'm walking everywhere and they don't walk, they drive. I've now started looking at passing cars and the fat populace is now growing. 27th of the 1st, 2019. I travelled from one MBB to the next, still located in San Fran. The weather was prime so I decided to walk to the closest park to read. I was not expecting to stumble across the best park I've ever been to. A large area, bottom for the children, having a ball, a group of juggling, hula hooping characters and a large hill for the pot smoking groups of friends, individuals soaking in the sun and many gay couples. Men with ice cream strollers, gymnasts walking on tight ropes interconnected on palm trees, clear coherent views of the city, speakers blasting, would come back to San Fran for the sole reason of reuniting with this park on a warm Sunday afternoon with a special someone. As Neve would put it, it's a vibe. 28th of the 1st, 2019. My hostel is right in the middle of it all, parked on the main street of a sprawling hipster town. Every second store is a vintage clothes store, or a weed paraphernalia store, or a cafe. This comes with a vast range of characters, a large LGBTQ community, and the American stamped homeless and junkies. 29th of the 1st, 2019. Went to the Exploratorium where I paid $30 to see 40% nifty and cool things and 60% outdated trash. What struck out to me was this one room that made everything seem black and white, and when you put a light on something, it would show its true colours. I spent three hours FaceTiming Delphi this night. 30th of the 1st, 2019. I went to the San Francisco Zoo today. All the animals were sleeping disappointingly and flamingos were a lot less aesthetic as I thought. It tested my morals coming here. I'm usually against the structure of zoos and my gut told me not to go. It was sad when I spent minutes to spot a sloth in its enclosure. When I finally found it, it was hiding in the very top corner, trying to stray as far away as possible from humans. Went to one of the weirdest cinemas I've ever been to. First of all, the fucking water was seven dollary doos. And the seating area was so long and narrow. The ground was all bumpy and all over the place, with some seats in front being higher than the ones behind. I watched the film Cold War, directed by Paul Pawlowski, the most beautifully shot film I've ever seen, though the plot is fairly unoriginal. 31st of the 1st, 2019. Today was dedicated to relaxing, another full day of walking nowhere in particular. I traversed the Golden Gate Park along stripper museums, joggers and homeless. I was infuriated by the fact I had to pay to enter a Chinese garden. I FaceTimed my dear friend Sway, where I discovered a nifty little arcade, walls aligned with classic to modern pinball machines. We also discovered that the pizza slices are bigger than my face. I trespassed the San Francisco University where I had to James Bond my way into a toilet waiting for somebody to unlock the door, and then swooping in. 1st of the 2nd, 2019. First day of February. All I did this day was write postcards and send them off. I sent them off to family as they enjoyed the arrival of them, and to a co-worker named Herm. Majority of my four years working with Herm has been him praising the United States, telling me all his tales travelling there. His excitement and joy when I told him I was going was nothing less than wholesome. He recommended me all these places and was counting down the days for when I was going. He even gave me spending money. I thought writing him a postcard was necessary for somebody so invested in my holiday. 2nd of the 2nd, 2019. 
Before leaving to get my bus from San Fran back to LA, I realized I hadn't yet gotten a 21 plus year old to give me a packet of cigarettes. I purely wanted the packet rather than the actual darts because of the fact it actually prints the brand's logo. In Australia, cigarette packets are covered with images of cancer victims, deformed throats and toeless feet, unlike the aesthetic packaging of Marlboro's. The views from the bus summed up my trip. It went from beautiful views of empty grass mountains covered by peaking water levels contrast to homeless parks with tents spread everywhere. 3rd of the 2nd, 2019. I travelled from one hotel to another today. I kept myself entertained through watching American television, which seems like a parody of itself. Chaos ensued at the hotel caused by strong rain, power outages and angry guests. 4th of the 2nd, 2019. Today I had to pay an extra $85 for a late checkout. Leaving the apartment any earlier would have led me to be stranded at the airport. My flight was at 11pm. I'm keeping myself entertained through reading the sci-fi novel, Dune. 5th of the 2nd, 2019. I have now arrived back at Australia. I dread going back to the routine yet love that fact. I finally get to use my purchases, vinyl, CDs, etc. 6th of the 2nd, 2019. I had to attend my uni orientation for this day. A two hour travel for a 30 minute shitty PowerPoint. My expectations for uni this year is a bootlegged version of last year. I went for dinner at the Sandy pub for Michael's birthday. A friend who has shown more loyalty and kindness in the past year of knowing him than the combination of many years from many friends. We'll take a punch for you and we'll tuck you in bed. We proceeded to their local club. It comes across as a house and feels like a 14 year old's party. Even they agree. To make fun, we had to steal plants and break glasses. 7th of the 2nd, 2019. After staying at Nick's for the night, we travelled to the city for a New Wave film crew meeting. Image includes Nick, Rachel Vowles, Jack McDonald McDowell and Tom Mullen. I'm lucky to have met and work with such a talented and dedicated team. I note Nick for his hard work, dedication and his professional style when it comes to camera work. I note Rachel for a special eye when it comes to cinematography, making even the ugliest of environments look beautiful. I note Jack for his pure talent when it comes to VFX and editing, a man that will impress you with any editing request you give him. I praise Tom for his perfectionist attitude, his ability to pour hours into his work and to complete a finished product that meets expert standard. 8th of the 2nd, 2019. Today is the day of a major new wave gig with a majority of musician members playing live at the Lucid venue. Powerful preparation has been put into this, with the artists pouring hours into practice, graphic designers making lethal promos, and the film crew catching all of it. Luth, aka Young Shogun, Aaron, aka Marlo, Tate, aka Raiko, Noah, aka Delilah Bloom, and Holly, aka Dizzy, will play and destroy it. Tom was on Gimbal, myself on Retro Gear, Rachel on Atmosphere, Wide Shots, crowd and talent and Nick on close-ups. 9th of the 2nd, 2019. My first day back at work. Part of me wish I never left so I wouldn't have the immense dread of having to come back. I went to Mornington for Paige's birthday where we sat down for drinks and dinner like a bunch of fucking adults. Mornington hasn't changed and is still a shithole. 10th of the 2nd, 2019. A casual Sunday including work and dinner with my friends Jacob Maynard, Suede Crowd and Sophie Williams. We ate Asian food at a park and ice cream at our local ice cream shop, Mubble. I got cappuccino and some shit plain flavor. 11th of the 2nd, 2019. I have started uni again, doing the advanced diploma of screen and media back at RMIT. My class is a mixture of students from last year's four classes. Pictured is a mate from last year's class, Eddie Skerritt, a comedic genius with an encyclopedic knowledge of comedy. Gives the best recommendations for things to watch. Our two classes were Direct Performers, which is dedicated to directing and how to interpret the script to direct the cast, and Edit Complex Screen Production. This photo is taken on the walk back to our daily commute to get home. 12th of the 2nd, 2019. Second day of uni with an 8.30am start, which pains me. Today's classes were Evolve Ideas for Creative Work, which I still don't know what is about due to no actual explanation, and Engage in business, which is dedicated to the business slash money aspect of filmmaking. This photo is of Kira and Neve O'Connell, with whom I had not seen since last year. 
Our get-togethers consist of going to Spud Bar and getting Sundays at Macca's. It was great to reunite. 13th of the 2nd, 2019. Third day at uni which consisted of design animation and VFX class, which I thoroughly enjoy due to the amount I actually learn. I feel like I am actually getting my money's worth. And because of truly the sick cunt teacher. It also consisted of a four and a fucking half hour break between classes. Eddie and I filled this time by location scouting for a short film I am soon working on at Brunswick Street. We witnessed the craziest neon graffiti and a poster with an egg. Our next class was plan and manage pre-production, which involves the paperwork aspect of filmmaking, budgeting and scheduling. During our break, we got a couple of brewskis from a bar just around the corner of our building. Captured is the two pots of Sapporo. 14th of the 2nd, 2019. Fourth day university, which once again started at 8.30. The class is write scripts, which I am excited for as I see screenwriting as the area I expertise in and enjoy the most. Though we did learn the three phase structure of film, start, middle and end, which ticked me off as I find it limiting. After this, I got a couple of beers with a new mate, Jack Montgomery. 15th of the 2nd, 2019. This was meant to be my fifth day of uni where I would have direct cinematography, but instead I slept in, also because I had to traverse to Wilson's prom. A yearly tradition of our family and a couple of other families is to camp at Tidal River. Disappointingly last year I was unable to attend because of uni. But now that I have my license I force myself to go at least one night. After a three hour drive we set camp and went straight to the beach where you battle the waves and take in the incredible views. Pictured is Joel McGrath and evidence of our nightly antics. 16th of the 2nd, 2019. After traveling back home from Wilson's prom, I had to go straight to work. Then after work, I had to go straight to the city. Neve, Jesse, Annabelle and I got an apartment to have an easy place to stay after a night of clubbing. We got into a shitty club for free thanks to Neve, where we got drunk to the point where anything is fun. I forgot to get a photo from night before, so here is everyone hungover in the morning. 17th of the 2nd, 2019. All I did today was work. The only interesting thing that happened was the dream I had, involving water parks, Lisa Simpson, losing bowling, and blow up sex dolls chasing me. 18th of the 2nd, 2019. I came late to a new wave whole crew meeting today, where a wide variety of topics were apparently discussed. Rachel, Tom, Nick, and Luth were still present. In typical Aussie fashion, we sat around a table in the backyard and chinwagged about high school and other such topics while smoking a dart. Luth, he has a special aura that brings the best from people. He always has high energy which keeps the mood high and keeps the motivation present. A man who will go far with his rapping career and all his other endeavours. 19th of the 2nd, 2019. A photo of the house I'm currently staying in. Makes my travel to uni shorter. Rather than a two hour trip, it's only an hour trip. This house belongs to the McGrath family. A family I have known since I was born due to our parents being high school mates. Located in a suburban neighborhood, which always gives me comfy vibes. This house is where second most of my memories have come from. In it lives a truly selfless and hilarious family. 20th of the 2nd, 2019. A photo of the building I attended at RMIT, Building 94. The art building, which you can guess due to the edgy out there characters with a pretentious fashion sense smoking outside. The place where I spend five days a week. Accompanied is a heavy, heavily populated smokers area, a library, a cafe, computer rooms, and classrooms. 21st of the 2nd, 2019. On this day, I joined a couple of music members from New Wave to film them on my VHS camera. Their setup is incredible with the addition of a big fuck off monitor with speakers, microphones, LED lights, photo projector, and Skate 3. In frame is Luth, Noah, Sol, and Aaron Kale, all at work on new songs. Noah. A talented artist with an omnipotent eye for style in terms of the content he creates, clothing, etc. A jack of all trades. He burns my heart with his sense of humour. Aaron, an alpha male, a powerful rapping voice and undoubtedly will go places. 22nd of the 2nd, 2019. A photo of Southern Cross Station, a symbol for my most common form of transport when travelling to the city, trains. This during peak hour where seats are rare, personal space is eradicated, and body odours thrive. Trains give me uninterrupted time to read, write, and listen. It gives me the push to stick to one thing. 23rd of the 2nd, 2019. 
On the 23rd of February, I travelled with old high school friends to Mornington, where once again we had to travel so far for so little. We bar crawled with Stefan Millick, Blake Mead, Tyler McKenzie, Sophie and Eliza Nags. Stefan is defined by his fuckboy style, awkward interactions with women, cynical humour and a chill guy to hang with. Blake I mentioned last year for his reserved attitude which leaves everything he does say to being important or funny. Tyler still has dirty hands. 24th of the 2nd, 2019. My Sunday ritual of working and recovering from a hangover. Nothing noteworthy from today other than the beautiful fact I get to work with a suede groat. 25th of the 2nd, 2019. Big New Wave meeting. Monday nights are currently dedicated to full group meetings with New Wave, where we discuss matters that range from what is everybody doing, what are we leading up to, and how we can communicate better. Pictured are my second family, a group that pushes me and gives me hope in Australia's creative future. 26th of the 2nd, 2019. Tuesday nights are dedicated to spending time with Neve O'Connell, where we either get dinner at Spud Bar or go to the Lido Cinemas, though we always end up at Macca's to get a Sunday ice cream. Lido Cinemas is a beautiful movie theatre that blends local and mainstream movies and has a colourful thought out interior. Each room is differentiated by colour and toilets, either Stanley Kubrick for males or Sofia Coppola for females. We watched Alita Battle Angel directed by Robert Rodriguez, which I thought was just going to be Hollywood trash, but I actually had fun with. Had impossibly beautiful and realistic animation and reminded me a lot of Spy Kids. 27th of the 2nd, 2019. New Wave film crew shot a cypher music video of some New Wave artist Times Drank Water, another rap collective. The cypher included a big group where whoever's part of the song it was would jump in front and rap intimately close to the camera, also capturing the background's atmosphere. We filmed it as a promo for our upcoming show. 28th of the 2nd, 2019. June, written by Frank Herbert. A large book which I finished for February. Part of my New Year's resolution to read at least one book a month. An incredible, sophisticated, powerful sci-fi book, which made me feel smart for learning whole new cultures, politics, hierarchies, creatures, planet knowledge, and more. 1st of the 3rd, 2019. For my old friend Alana Coote's birthday, a group of us went to Mornington for drinks. It's weird to think high school friends are now old friends. Kuda is someone I rarely see anymore due to living two completely separate lives, which is disappointing. I'm glad we still see each other on the rare birthday. She has an unbeaten sense of humour and has shaped me to be the person I am today. So many memories that I hope will never fade. Also framed is Paige Top, Swade Crowed, Ingrid Trivet, Kelsey Fern and Heron Lane Watt. 2nd of the 3rd, 2019. After a juxtaposed beautiful yet painful dinner with Ingrid at a new restaurant, we travelled to the local for Lockie Stevens 21st. At the restaurant, I thought the O'Leary curse had kicked in, where our food is forgotten about. Turns out it was just an extremely defined one hour and a bit late wait for our pizzas. The fact I enjoy the experiencing of eating out and complain about my service makes me feel like an unwarranted adult. I don't want to enjoy these things and sound like a prune. 19 is too young for that. 3rd of the 3rd, 2019. What got me through this day of work is that I was working aside Blue Black. Somebody I resonate so much with through humour, likes and dislikes, etc. That we are practically the same person. We even look alike. He used my ID as a fakey. Though he looks more like a 19 year old Con O'Leary than I do due to being taller. 4th of the 3rd, 2019. This is the current room I've been sleeping in. This is how dull my day was I had to resort to taking a photo of this. I guess what this can encapsulate is how much I like to move around. Staying at new places always keeps me on my own toes. 5th of the 3rd, 2019. A uni mate of mine from last year, Noah DaCosta, works at the RMIT Boost, and in a selfless act supplied me with a free coffee dream boost. Noah is one of the rare humans that ticks all the boxes of being great, an upbeat, funny and truly kind person that will go far with his pursuit in the industry. 6th of the 3rd, 2019. After uni, David Mondas, Jack and I decided to schmunk up together. In an act of pure defiance to a high mind, David left to go play futsal. Jack and I attempted to go to a bar where after a lengthy mindfuck of a conversation with the bartender, we regretfully literally ran away from her. 7th of the 3rd, 2019. Coincidentally, my sister Rose works five minutes away from where I study. We organised to catch up for lunch. It was great to hang out uninterrupted and individually which is something we rarely get to do due to our busy lives. 
we caught each other up with our lives, what we've been up to, and what our future holds in a mere 30 minute conversation. Hopefully this becomes a weekly thing. 8th of the 3rd, 2019. We had our next event at Lucid, which featured all the New Wave crew and the Drank Water crew. 9th of the 3rd, 2019. Finished Inherent Vice, written by Thomas Pynchon. Never have I physically laughed at a book until this one. A complex and purposefully hard story to follow, which hilariously puts you in the mindset of the stoner investigator main character. Some of the wittiest detailed writing I've ever seen. A master at explaining an environment. 10th of the 3rd, 2019. After work, I headed to Portsy Pub with Neve, Annabelle, Lockie Huxtable, and Annabelle's boyfriend, Brayden Ladder. We had some cheeky drinks and dinner before we went to Sophie's. As the night went on, those hanging dwindled down to Chipper, Glover, Tyler McKenzie, Richo, Kalani Ryan, and Boston Kloster, where Jared burst my eardrum and everybody's social smoking habits kicked in. It from being strenuous, repetitive, and suicide worthy. 11th of the 3rd, 2019. Our new location for our new wave meetings, the RMIT balcony, where the relaxed slash serious blend together with seats and grass, a perfect place. We discuss many things such as how we should put our foot down when it comes to being a business. 12th of the 3rd, 2019. When I'm not doing homework at the McGrath's house, I'm playing video games with Joel. A long time ago, we discovered the pure magic of putting two TVs and Playstations together to play online games. 13th of the 3rd, 2019. One of my best friends, Delphi, is now studying at RMIT, allowing us to hang out during our breaks. We traverse to what we described as the stereotypical American college hangout area old style looking building with a large grass open expanse with people reading books and sleeping. 14th of the 3rd, 2019. This is where I've been getting my photos developed for this project, Frankston Peninsula Camera Center. Amazing for its quick turnaround time and how cheap it is. 15th of the 3rd, 2019. A cinematography involved an assessment that followed us doing an interview where we had to compose the lighting and cinematography in the same style as the interviewee's favorite cinematographer. My favourite cinematographer was Roger Deakins. I had to try and replicate a scene from the James Bond film, Skyfall. 16th of the 3rd, 2019. After a long week in the city, it is always pleasurable to come back down on the weekends to see the family. I sit down and have a few beers with them and we all catch up on each other's week. I consume their chosen beer in Dad's man shed, with the news playing in the ambient background, and where Elvis begs for a pat. We discuss my unluckiness on receiving two fines in the week and the need to see a specialist for my ear. 17th of the 3rd, 2019. Once again, I see myself doing something that I think is solely an adult activity, and my disappointed teenage self enjoys it. Taking dogs to a dog beach, something I've regretfully not done with my own dog. Rather, I did it with Eliza and her dog Milo, in this hidden beach tucked away in Safety Beach. I find myself interested in the way dogs interact with one another. They seem so awkward and confused, I finally found out the reason why dogs smell each other's assholes, because the bumhole has the glands that speaks volumes on their gender, healthiness, age, and so on. 18th of the 3rd, 2019. Melbourne, crowned many times the most livable city, somewhere I can now truly appreciate and truly be critical of. Coming from rural Mornington Peninsula, it was a different experience, but after over a few years of spending majority of time here, I now see its opportunities, small community, and many connections. 19th of the 3rd, 2019. Tonight, I watched movies on my laptop. Another movie related challenge, which sadly I've completely fucked up on the cinema one, is to build a list of recommendations from friends to watch in chronological order. It began from Chungking Express, requested by Kira Han from my uni class. Then, A Bigger Splash, requested by Alan Mooney, and As of Photo, Predator, requested by Jack Montgomery. 20th of the 3rd, 2019. After a long day at uni, I travelled back to my mate Jack's house on Chapel Street, where we attended his local bar, Leonard's, with his girlfriend, Casey Jordan. One of the coolest bars I've ever been to, with a cabin Canadian lumberjack vibe, decorated with pinball machines, pool table, framed images of naked women, and so on. 21st of the 3rd, 2019. Rachel invited me to the Vows household for dinner tonight. After a year of being such good friends with her, it was nice to finally meet them. Her mother, Marie, made an exquisite zucchini slice, and I got to see her younger sister, Alice, karate moves. 22nd of the 3rd, 2019. After heading back down to the Ninch, I headed to the Rye Pub with Jay to see a few local bands play, like Bleach and Stiff Richards. 
It was good to see many of the locals, but also reminds me why I don't like to see him too much. Exhilarating to get involved in the mosh, going in blind, headbanging, pushing, and watching piles stack up. 23rd of the 3rd, 2019. Tonight saw the return of Ryan Oswald. An old friend, Ryan Oswald, disappeared randomly to Queensland, and he finally returned to say a quick hello. We all met at... Salt. 24th of the 3rd, 2019. Dad and his new motorbike. My father is one of those rare people that try to hide their likes and dislikes. It is special when you find out one of them. One that he has made obvious is his like for motorbikes. He invests a lot of time and enjoys riding them. He recently purchased a new motorbike. Seen in image. A Harley Davidson. 25th of the 3rd, 2019. In class with David and Eddie today, learning. Or not learning, not too sure. Not sure if I'm getting much from this course. Hard to tell. Haven't been put to the test. Not sure. Hopefully this certificate is enough rather than the knowledge which I may or may have not learnt. 26th of the 3rd, 2019. Went to the Lido Cinemas on another Tuesday with Neve and Kira to watch Lego Movie 2. Surprisingly not as bad as I expected. An enjoyable, funny film for a range of ages. 27th of the 3rd, 2019. Enjoyed a few beers with a few people from the 2B Screen and Media class at the Curtain Bar. We discussed films whilst the Warriors played in the background. Tried my first pickle shot, a weird experience. 28th of the 3rd, 2019. With a banging headache and sickly hangover, I pushed myself to travel to Bayside area to meet up with Nick and Luth to shoot a music video for Young Shoguns, Third Eye Gang. 29th of the 3rd, 2019. Finished the book Fight Club in under a week. When the movie follows the book's event, the narration and writing is near identical. A lot of the time the book is a lot darker with more fucked up events. It is also more straight to the point, going from one event to the next quickly. The author Chuck Palunkic does this nifty thing where he usually talks about multiple different things in the one chapter and overlays and repeats them. 30th of the 3rd, 2019. Many invited Chipper and I to the Peninsula Hot Springs with free entry. Seeings as I've never been before and hadn't seen the boys in a while, I went. A weird but calming experience floating with strangers in dead skin and warm water. Perfect weather for it as it was nippy and raining. Afterwards we got kafer and put some money on the poor innocent tortured race dogs. 31st of the 3rd, 2019. On a rainy Sunday night, Neve and I went to the cinemas to see Us, directed by Jordan Peele. A decent film, with enough redeemable scenes to forget the shitty, usual horror tropes like main characters doing dumb cunt things. Enough answers to forgive its open-ended surreal parts. Music makes movies a million times better for me, and the score put the cherry on top. Neve and I have this film rating system, 180 degrees out of 180 degrees. Thumbs up, which equals 180 degrees means really good. Thumbs down equals zero degrees, means shit. Can range from that. She gave it 120 degrees. First of the fourth, 2019. After our weekly meeting, the New Wave crew went to Don Don's for dinner, an Asian restaurant that sell a disgustingly good platter of food for an expensively cheap $9. I shared it with the dear Aaron Kale. Tough, empathetic, and as funny as a human can get. Second of the fourth, 2019. No class and plans meant I resorted to doing homework at RMIT. I surprised myself with how much I got done, continuing to night time. In frame is the main nudie building amongst the city. Thought I would hate having the campus in the city, but I'm now so thankful. Every different sort of food joint, easy to get to and fro with transport, and a great rendezvous point. Always stumbling across people I know. So many bars and stores. Every range of characters. 3rd of the 4th, 2019. Dearest Holly Victor is going away for a holiday, so we gathered to say goodbye and happy birthday. A night of actual quality tunes, drinking games, and the cherry on top with motherfucking fairy bread. Holly described in three words would be righteous, beautiful, and lively, which are included in my list of favourite traits and people. And do not get me started on her singing. 4th of the 4th, 2019. Finished three rows of my CD collection, finalising it with Herbie Hancock's Headhunters and York's debut. Got them on the way home from uni to make travelling to Sora easier. I own these CDs due to only using CDs in my car instead of having an ox cord, because it is objectively better. 5th of the 4th, 2019. Finally got to sit down with my sister and have a great uninterrupted convo over dinner. 
where we conversed a range of topics in the adult category. My sister, in three words, inspiring, selfless, and courteous. 6th of the 4th, 2019. In preparation for an upcoming dress-up Disney-themed party, where Neve is Mushu and I'm Cricky, we re-watched Mulan to get into character. Turns out Neve's character is a funny motherfucker with the voice of Eddie Murphy, and my character is a pussy with no voice. We watched accompanied with our Maltesers slash popcorn combo and chili con carne dish. 7th of the 4th, 2019. After work, Swade and I treated ourselves to smoothies and ice creams. It is always a pleasure spending a few hours with Swade doing nothing but talking. We never fail to have a topic. I get so much out of it, and she is a rare person I fully honestly trust in. We watched the sun go down as I spilled ice cream on her car. 8th of the 4th, 2019. Finished and completed the book 2061 Odyssey 3. Probably the shittest book I've ever read, the last book in the Odyssey trilogy, and definitely the worst. Completely disregards the themes and story of the first book, which made it special. Instead focuses on dumb, outdated political and social themes, following shit, boring characters. Its descriptions of extraterrestrial planets are interesting, but are seemingly pointless. The conclusion was something we knew since the first book. Thumbs down. 9th of the 4th, 2019. Lauren Black is back in town. As one of my best friends, I was happy for her choice to do what everybody dreams of. Travelling, then deciding to live there, then creating new friends and starting a new life. After a long wait for her to traverse down back to the peninsula, it was a pleasure to see her and her boyfriend, Nick. Lauren and I have been close for 10 years, a long time that doesn't feel long enough. We have been brought together through our sense of humour, a love of art and enjoying each other's company. No matter what she goes through, she comes out strong and powerful. Nick is an extremely personal person with that typical Byron Bay style. 10th of the 4th, 2019. On this day, I finished uni with no plans. What I love about the city is that friends were close by. I got to hang out with Rachel and Dom Witty. We met at Top Arts Exhibition in Fed Square. A culmination of year 12 artwork is on display and celebrated rightfully so. Most of the time. It is good to see the amount of talent. 11th of the 4th, 2019. Rachel, Nick, Dom and I baked a motherfucking cake on this day. Filmed ourselves on Rachel's MacBook going through the process of putting cake mix, fluff, marshmallow, milo, coffee, peanut butter and various other things in the mix. We decorated the cake with drawings of boys, gangster sheeps, Bart and New Wave. Tasted elegant. 12th of the 4th, 2019. This night was New Wave film crew's first paid gig. It involved filming a club event in the city from 10pm to 4am. Four videographers, Rachel, Nick and Tom with their Sony mirrorless, I with my camcorder and 3D film camera, and Alex on photography, Jack doing VFX. It was a slow and painful night being sober and working in a club. You got to fully experience the degenerates and the shitty music. New Wave film crew made it bearable. I didn't get home till 7am. 13th of the 4th, 2019. Sad news hit the Mornington Peninsula yesterday. A local friend, son and skater, Timothy Hocking passed away. In a sort of selfish human instinct, you think of how these events affect you, linking yourself to what memories you had of a victim. I remembered my high school years, hanging out with him and others, smoking a lot of weed. As I focused on my studies, I drifted away from him. I take a step back and put my warmest condolences with the people truly affected by these events, to the families and his close friends. Rest in peace. 14th of the 4th, 2019. Tonight saw Raiko having a listening party to his latest album, If This Is What You Need. He changed my stubborn views on autotune and he proved that it can be perfected and sound beautiful. 15th of the 4th, 2019. As I have mentioned before, a lot of my time is spent on trains. As much as it can be a pain when it is cramped and your body aches whilst on it, I think the positives it brings is overlooked. I get a lot of time to just sit, do nothing, reminisce, read and listen to music, and so on. A lot of my film ideas originate from my train trips and usually give me time to expand on pre-existing ideas. I am borderline forced to read to stay away from boredom. I am glad I have this push because I get to read a lot, which is ultimately satisfying. 16th of the 4th, 2019. After a day of uni and before going to the cinemas, I caught up with my parents in the city who came up for the night. We sat on a nice rooftop bar talking over a few drinks. Starting drinking at an early illegal age, my parents were always against it. It was a taboo, so drinking with them often feels strange, but it is a normal thing to do now at such an age. 
17th of the 4th, 2019. To my Blythness, I have seen my sister a fair amount this week. Due to our studies, work and social life, it is a rarity we find time to spend with each other. This week has been a deviation. Today, she introduced me to the exquisite food, Barek. Our time was cut short when we both had to go back to our duties. 18th of the 4th, 2019. Tonight, I attended Cassie Reed's 18th with Neve. To my delight, Cassie made it a themed party, Disney. One of my favorite things in life is themed parties. Don't know how to explain why. I just froth the process of op shopping, looking for items and seeing what everybody else is wearing. I attempted to dress up as Goofy, Neve as Moana and Cassie as Princess Jasmine. It was saddening to be reminded the fun of 18ths, whole year levels getting together and getting hammered. 19th of the 4th, 2019. On this Good Friday, Neve and I crossed over to Phillip Island. We were only there for a good couple of hours due to the traffic being asked to ask all the way up. Once we finally got there, we went to a couple of beaches where we thought we would have a dip, but instantly got put off by the cold weather. I taught Neve the magic of skipping stones, leading to the breaking of her bracelet. She also spilt slushy everywhere. We attempted to get fish and chips for dinner, but instantly got put off by the two hour wait. 20th of the 4th, 2019. This evening I spent editing on the program Sony Vegas, Fuck Premiere Pro, and the other editing softwares. I edited the recording of Raiko's album Launch Party, which I filmed with my camcorder. 21st of the 4th, 2019. After a week of the passing of Tim, an event at Rosebud Skate Park was held in commemoration of him. It was set at this skate park as this is where he spent a lot of his time, perfecting the skill of skating and hanging out with his mates. He was loved for his crude sense of humour. Many spray paint murals were made and a memorial in his favourite skating gap. It was special to see everyone coming together, listening to music, eating snacks, skating and raising money for an irreplaceable young legend. 22nd of the 4th, 2019. The start of my week off from uni still saw me travelling to the city, but for good reason. To see Tom Mullen and purchase his Sony A600. Over a coffee, he discussed with me the basics of the camera, how everything works and gave me a rundown of its best settings. On our way to lunch, we stumbled across an Asian restaurant. As we walked up, we realised that it was not catered for Westerners, where the menu had barely any English on it and the workers spoke none of it. We got highly confused by the system they had, which turned out we needed to cook our own dumplings. Tom the twat chose the spiciest option and we left the dumplings in the mix for so long it soaked the fuck out of the chilies. My throat was murdered. 23rd of the 4th, 2019. On my second day off, I caught up with old mate Sophie for some dumplings. As we waited for the food, the smart cunts at the restaurants have decks of Uno cards for customers to play whilst we wait. For dessert, I bought a Kit Kat ice cream. Shittest thing I have ever had. Nobody buy this egg of an ice cream. To finalise the night, we parked at Arthur's seat to see the Peninsula's night lights. 24th of the 4th, 2019. On my third day of holidays, I travelled to Delphi's new house in Berwick. Coincidentally, it turns out she lived very close to where I have been staying. Something I've noticed about Delphi and I's friendship is a lot of coincidental occurrences happen fairly often. Such as one time when we were looking at some random chick, also named Delphi's blog post. A picture of a blonde kid showed up rock climbing and I said, My friend Connor rock climbing. We scrolled down and that was the exact caption. Another occurrence was when I was FaceTiming her in America. She was telling me places to go. She said Whole Foods at the exact moment I looked at a Whole Foods sign. Today, we did a walk called the 1000 Steps, which given its name, you have to walk up 1000 steps. I was surprised I was able to pull it off seeing as I never exercise. I enjoy my conversations with Delphi. They remain philosophical and I feel I learn a lot from her. 25th of the 4th, 2019. On my fourth day of holidays, Eliza and I decided to do the Ocean Road Drive. We began the journey by adding two hours to the trip for the sake of not having to pay for the ferry, and instead went the whole way around Melbourne. Our first destination was Torquay, a stop off for a coffee and whiz. Got stitched up with $10 ham and cheese croissant. Second stop was a lighthouse. If I had to have a fetish for an inanimate object, it would be a lighthouse. I find them so fascinating. Third stop was lawn for some lunch and to admire the beach town. Fourth and last stop was Apollo Bay, in picture, where we got final snacks and watched the sunset. 26th of the 4th, 2019. On my last day of holidays, I watched Avengers Endgame directed by Joe and Anthony Russo. I went with Chris King, an ex-co-worker from Seclunas. It was his second time watching it and I understand why. 
I'm not a huge fan of superhero films due to their repetitiveness and poor filmmaking, but this film exceeds that. It stays fresh. Wraps up everything very nicely and sentimentally. It has the perfect blend of drama, action and humour. I love catching up with Chris. I award him with the medal of being the nicest person I know. We have many similar interests and I love being able to be so open about them and have such long conversations about them, such as games and films. He deserves to prosper in whatever he does in life. 27th of the 4th, 2019. A few high school friends decided to band together for a typical peninsula night. Pre-drinks at one of their houses, tonight was Sophie's, then travelling to have pre-drinks at bars and then on to Shithouse Duza. I forgot to take a photo of the gang, so contently instead I got a photo of Eliza. What this encapsulates is the fact that her and I were Dezos for the night. We didn't drink so we drove every cunt and left when everybody went clubs because it is universally known going to clubs sober is a sin to your mental state. 28th of the 4th, 2019. My usual Sunday shift at Seclunas was interrupted by Kate James. Kate was an old manager. I think what Kate taught me as a manager was nothing to do with fruit and vegetables but rather social skills such as how to tell people to get fucked. I also learnt that not every adult was a prune without a sense of humour and that adults can still be juvenile. 29th of the 4th, 2019. A photo of a sky. A nice, aesthetic, colourful sky. This was the day of Tim's funeral. I was unable to make it, so I did my own send-off. I buried a grinder we used to use back in the day. I hope, yet I feel, sentiment came from this act. My everlasting condolences. 30th of the 4th, 2019. After a few absent weeks of the tradition on a Tuesday seeing Neve and Kira, we got a huge motherfuck off pizza and put the cherry on top with an ice cream tonight. I wonder where and what would humans do whilst socialising if we didn't eat food. 1st of the 5th, 2019. As plans fell through on this Wednesday night, I contemplated, especially about this documentary. I came to the realisation this will be a film I ritually watch every now and then to look back on and to appreciate what future me thinks was the simpler times. I do agree that living this current year as a 19 year old is simple compared to what complexities will enter my life as an adult. I'm beginning to witness these complexities such as work, love and hardships. Future me will laugh at that statement as I probably never understood what was coming. What scares me is how quickly life will pass from now on due to the inevitable busy schedule. One of the main reasons I wanted to make this was to slow down this year, an exercise in keeping myself in the present to have an even more deeper connection to my future self, who is watching. I want to predict and question every 10 year interval of myself starting from 29. I will do this on coming days where I have nothing better to do or talk about. 2nd of the 5th, 2019. Come this Thursday, I met up with some new wave crew to help a music video shoot. Only does one understand how much a second set of hands can make things so much easier once they become a filmmaker. A big fuck you to the cancel of Kingston for having the most easily agitated hysterical security to a precious fucking car park. Eat my boogers. Congratulations to music crew and Nick Ray to finishing another whole crew music video. 3rd of the 5th, 2019. Haha, <laughs> PlayStations. A major hobby of mine when I was younger was video games. I preferred playing games over sports, school and at times socialising. I find myself trying to look for times to play but rarely do due to busyness. My go-to console was slash is PlayStation. Slicker interface, loved the controller, more friends had it, and better exclusives. Tonight I was able to sit down and play for a couple of hours, which I haven't done for years. 4th of the 5th, 2019. One thing that will be ingrained in my mind forever is my fireplace. Spent many nights in front of it, staying warm on Saturday nights after coming back from the pub with the parents. A cosy memory. Tonight was one of those nights. 5th of the 5th, 2019. Those who know me know I'm very into screenwriting. I enjoy it because it is the area of film I strive the most in. It allows me to put into place all my ideas. I finished a script tonight called An Unforgettable Lunch about a guy that has a surreal lunch and goes to extreme lengths to remember what he ate. 6th of the 5th, 2019. Finished the book Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance and Inquiry into Values, written by Robert M. Persig. Split into three different interweave stories, I thoroughly enjoyed two of them but found one convoluted. His semi-autobiographical story following his motorbike trip was nice to read, inspiring me to want to get my own motorbike license and to do something similar with my dad. The story of his ghost of his past, Phaedrus, never interests me, but researching what it meant made me appreciate it. The inclusion of philosophy and its implications in the real world was my favourite part. I've always enjoyed philosophy, but hate how you can never really do anything with it in this day and age. I saw myself taking photos of some quotes from the book, which I've never done before.
7th of the 5th, 2019. Another night studying at RMIT. Another night of contemplation. As I have nothing better to talk about, I thought I would speak to my 29-year-old self. Hello. If you're still alive, if you're not, I totally understand, but if you are, hello. Are you still pursuing your dream as a filmmaker, or have you given up yet? Are you famous, or financially comfortable? What are your views on love now? Still don't believe in it? Or have you think you've found the one? Is the environment as doomed as everyone says it is? Is it true your 20s went by in a second? 8th of the 5th, 2019. Another benefit of living in Roeville is I am on the same train line as Rachel, allowing us to converse on our travels home. This is the precise moment I waved her goodbye as she got off. 9th of the 5th, 2019. In a matter of unfortunate events, I came across Luke Miller and the other Bayside locals. Felt like a preteen chunky as we walked Southland Plaza. This was the last time I saw Millie before she went on a long lasting trip. If you're watching, I hope you're having an unbelievable time. Luke Miller, a good guy to gap a dookie with. 10th of the 5th, 2019. Having a bit of a don on this day due to coming to a satisfying result with my camera collection. Seeing as I ascertained three free VHS cameras, I have a wide range of cameras. It goes from Super 8 VHS cameras, camcorders, digital cameras, point and shoot film cameras, disposable, GoPro, all the way to mirrorless camera. In a rare occasion of altruism, a man from a VHS to digital converter store gave me three VHS cameras for free. 11th of the 5th, 2019. When trying to plan what to do on Saturday nights with friends, decisions and procrastination usually gets the best of us and ultimately leads to doing nothing. So I took preliminary action and told Neve we're going bowling. We went to strike in Franger, which to my surprise, not only had bowling, but also an arcade, a bar, karaoke, and a photo booth. Neve three, Connor two. Neve won at Mario Kart, Basketball, and Jurassic Park, where we killed innocent dinosaurs. I won at air hockey and bowling. 12th of the 5th, 2019. Today is the day of celebration for all mothers, but most important, my mother, Pauline. I cannot stress enough how kind her soul is, a rare person who is truly altruistic. I thank her for shaping me as the perfect person I currently am. She holds the perfect balance in all traits. Her humour mixes all types. I thank her infinitely, and hope that someday I can pay her back for the duty, responsibility, and immense struggles she went through raising me. If I ever do or say anything that comes across as mean or hurtful, come back to this exact time in this documentary as I say to that hurtful version of myself, fuck you, mum is in the right. 13th of the 5th, 2019. Admittedly, I am cheating this day as this event happened yesterday, but I really wanted a day dedicated to this. Seeing as it was on Mother's Day, I'm putting it on this boring Monday. New Wave was an opening act for Matt Murray and the Durry Busters. It was great to see the wide range of talent in our group. Holly, aka Honey's singing, is from God's Choir. The addition of Noah on guitar and Aaron on drums worked so well. Luth, aka Young Shogun, did a freestyle over the guitar, which worked like a charm. Durry Busters' mix of punk and jazz kept my faith in underground scene. 14th of the 5th, 2019. Got to see Mid-90s directed by Jonah Hill at Cinema Nova. My first time at that cinema. A decent cinema but no photo worthy sign, so I had to resort to the closed booth sign. Was my second time seeing Mid-90s. Was amazing, yet problematic watching it at the cinema. One of my favourite films due to its themes, characters, era, and come-worthy soundtrack. The only dilemmas is its minor distractions in filmmaking errors, e.g. pacing, boom in shots, continuity, etc. But these can be forgiven. The acting is incredible, which furthered my care for each character. 15th of the 5th, 2019. Gorilla filming with Nick, Jake, and Luth. I caught up with these fellas whilst they were shooting a music video at RMIT. 16th of the 5th, 2019. To my great pleasure, Joel bought working PS2 controls, meaning we can finally use his PS2. We played old classics like GTA Vice City, WRC, War of the Monsters, etc. So satisfying to play something that holds so much nostalgic value. Nostalgia, I would define as a comfy feeling. In fact, it's one of the main reasons I'm doing this project, in hopes it will give nostalgia. My favourite PS2 games was either Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 or GTA San Andreas. 17th of the 5th, 2019. For the first time since 2017, a wide array of friends from Rosebud Secondary came together for drinks, semi-celebrating Minnie's 20th. Two in particular I had not seen since that long ago, David Sango and Charlie Casser. David and I were fairly close whilst at school, but rarely saw each other outside of it. Our humours were very similar. 
always being disruptive in class, and had a mutual love for messing with people. One lunch saw us pretending to drop our laptop in front of people when it was just a large calculator. I've never met someone since who has made me laugh as much. Charlie, I never really got to know. My goal is to change that. I can't die in peace knowing I haven't befriended her. 18th of the 5th, 2019. As a big boy adult, it is now my civil duty to vote in elections. Opposite to my highly politically educated and conscious sister, I know little to nothing about Australian politics. I hate politics because I find myself so on the fence about it. I'm on the fence even about being on the fence because I hate how it's used as an excuse to not form a legitimate opinion. I just started writing an opinion on the election, but I just realised that that's another reason I hate politics, is because it is an ill-informed, uneducated opinion. It's literally formed through others' opinions, which most of the time are also formed through just opinions rather than facts. Like, I believe, quote-unquote, liberals don't care about the environment, quote-unquote, only because of what others have said rather than legit sources. To overcome this, you could say I could do intense research into the debate to form informed opinions, but with the little time I have, I don't want to. Which then makes me selfish. I guess that's my current stance is that I'm selfish when it comes to politics. But in contradiction to that, I hate the selfish people who say, my vote won't count so I'm not going to vote. Like the whole point of elections is every vote counts. I just think that... <laughs> I just think to resolve any dilemma with politics, I will put more time into my decision. Also, tonight I got dinner with Suede, Sophie and Tyler. Seen in picture, in front of Community Centre, where I voted. 19th of the 5th, 2019. Every Sunday now and then, I worked with Ziggy Ring. A man with great stoner stories, a talent in being able to sing to every song, and punctuality worse than a dead man. 20th of the 5th, 2019. Finished the book, A Brief Guide to Philosophical Classics. After reading Zen, The Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, I got interested in philosophy again. This book reminded me a lot of the philosophers and theories that I learned in VC high school. It was interesting being recapped at first, but then it started dragging on. The book itself does have a good formula of explaining stuff. I did learn a few things which I'm glad about. 21st of the 5th, 2019. At Melbourne Central, they had large screens set up with Nintendo Switches. Eddie and I versed each other in Mario Kart. The cunt has much experience, always getting first in every round. I thought I had some skill, but apparently not getting an average of 7th place. Nothing really else to add, it was just fun. 22nd of the 5th, 2019. Tonight, had study time with David, Stephen and a coffee. One of those nights where you come out from doing homework feeling earnestly drained, which calls for a 6.30pm coffee. Coffee is a fundamental thing in my life. I always thought it was Ernie when people said they became dependent on coffee. I never believed I was dependent, but now I've come to the realisation I can't be independent without it. It makes doing anything noticeably better. The motion and taste of drinking it, preferable. Borderline addiction, not good for my dodgy heart and leaves bad breath, but since when did junkies ever care about that stuff? Will probs bring coffee up again? 23rd of the 5th, 2019. Luth and Nick seated, us all doing our own thing in Aaron's free house. Random items across the table. This is what Nick keeps on insisting is the perfect house living situation. I agree and thus the serious talks about moving out together have begun. Being able to be free from adults, having our own house, ability to create content 24-7, etc. is hopefully what will be happening this time next year. So much will get done in terms of New Wave and our friendships. 24th of the 5th, 2019. Like my fireplace, another image that is burned into my memory and that I will always associate with my Sereno house slash Friday nights is Elvis on his mat in the lounge room, an image I take for granted. Never have I seen a living creature so impeccably cosy compared to Elvis sleeping on his mat. The goofiness of his face dug into the corners and the eternal moving around to get into the right position, I will never forget. His obnoxious snoring and his odd eye opening when awakened. 25th of the 5th, 2019. This may seem crazy to those watching, but a true outlier. I worked on this Saturday. Two co-workers I worked with on this working day was worker number one, Taylor Hutchins, and worker number two, Cody Goodwin. Taylor is the third member from the Hutchins family to pop into my life. Pure and honest, Someone I can be myself around. Cody, the sort of person you want to do a few Jaeger shots and smoke a couple of Winnie Blues with. Puts the fun in workplace. 26th of the 5th, 2019. Tonight, there was a staff dinner for Seclunas. Something that has not happened for the four long years I've been there. It was located at Italico. I was first apprehensive about going, but I don't regret my decision as I was loaded with free food and alcohol. 
we had such a range slash large amount of food with the entrees including zucchini arancini bowls, fried olives and meatballs, all varieties of pizzas and pastas and a fuck off scrumptious Nutella pizza. It was fun to see those I only see at Sakluna's in a social setting. In frame is the highly female populated younger staff, ranging from Cody Goodwin, Abby Evans, Brooke Hutchins, Taylor Hutchins, Ruby Starr, Quinn McVie, Geordie Allen, Ruby Leonard, and Swade Crowed. 27th of the 5th, 2019. My Monday followed its usual structure. Travel from Sora to City for uni, from uni to New Wave meeting, from meeting to the McGraths. In true indie film style, I'd rather focus on a character analysis than the story. For Tate Smernikos. A man of beauty in all respects, honorable, comedic, affectionate, open, socially aware, and fun. 28th of the 5th, 2019. Today was packed with everything that I like about city life. Starting from attending uni, to getting a beer in a newly discovered bar, getting stoinked and going to cinemas, and finishing it off with sitting in at a Chinese restaurant. This photo is set in the newly discovered bar, the Curtain House Rooftop Bar. We watched John Wick Chapter 3, Parabellum. We were in awe. We witnessed a man screaming at the screen for the ads to finish. We were also convinced gods were listening to us as we forgot Maltesers and the next ad said, it's not too late to get your Maltesers. 29th of the 5th, 2019. Today in class, we used a switch room slash virtual studio. It is some nifty technology that I take for granted. The virtual studio is a 3D environment where the camera moves around in it. Seeing this equipment is new this year, nobody knows how to fucking use it. This is the green screen room where the camera moves around in. 30th of the 5th, 2019. Uni finished early, so I decided to head to Chapel Street to kill time and to see what clothes I could snag. Jack tagged along as the lucky bastard has an apartment there. Not much else to add other than I went into a couple of oppies, went into some pawn stores to find some PS2 games, and I waited around for Jack to clean his house whilst I watched meme compilations with his cousin. Chapel Street is one of the main places that makes me adore Melbourne so much. 31st of the 5th, 2019. Today we completed shooting a cinematography assessment, a short film featuring Eddie as courier, David as boss, Stephen as law, and I as the carrier. I waited around on level one of my building, killing time and snoozing as I waited for Neve to get into the city. I decided to show her the newly discovered rooftop bar I found with Jack the other day. Neve ascertained wine as I decided to buy a cherry collar mocktail, bringing out my hidden gay. Over a burger and views of the city, we discussed love and other topics. I told her I don't believe in love as I stared at who I love in the face. <laughs> First of the six, 2019. This Saturday saw the New Wave crew coming down to a house in Sereno to shoot a music video, slash spend some relaxo mode time with one another. Seeing as I had dumbass work, I couldn't be on set with them, but I showed them the hidden entrance to their location. After work, I went to the house where we all ate dinner like the Last Supper painting, played Super Smash Bros, chatted while rocking on rocking chairs, listening to actual good music, laying on trampolines, creating baked music video ideas, punching Noah in the balls, surfing Jordan, getting fly kicked by Tate off trampoline, hearing Luther click record on camcorder, Rachel having her own silent disco, Alex saying, nah, seeing Holly's beautiful shaved head, Tom claiming the trampoline, Denny being a sick cunt, and Marlo sadly leaving. Big shout out to Maddie Collins for having us over. 2nd of the 6th, 2019. For the second Sunday in a row, I went to Italico. Unfortunately, I had to pay this time and was not getting free beers. To make up for it, I got to devour my favourite margarita with some pals. I'm at a point where I've had some of these faces featured and named a multitude of times that if this was a narrative, surely the audience has learned their names by now. But for the safety of not offending anyone and the implication the audience are dumb cunts, I spent it with Neve, Sophie, Tyler, Minnie, Jesse, Annabelle, though special shout out to Taylor Beaumont, who I haven't seen for too long. She was in my top two funniest chicks from my year level. Shout out for shouting the Nutella pizza. We all discussed the possibility of eyelashes getting stuck behind eyeballs. 3rd of the 6th, 2019. Finish the book Heart of Darkness. When I asked Aaron why his stage name is Marlowe, he passed me the book Heart of Darkness written by Joseph Conrad. Marlowe is the main character of this literary masterpiece. This is the book Apocalypse Now was based off. The book is set in such an unrelenting, interesting dark part of human history. I was glad to be reading something different to the movie. I love the structure and how it's just Marlowe telling a story. I love how you can have many discussions about the text. 
and I now see why Aaron was so intrigued by the eccentric odd character Marlo. 4th of the 6th, 2019. Today is one of my last nights at the McGrath household. Staying there has made my life so much easier and I think I've taken it for granted how good the hospitality has been. One thing you don't fully realise or appreciate until after the fact is how good living with a funny family is. A staple part of my experience living here is their dog Millie. Due to my kind of analogy, I could not show Millie as much affection as I wanted, but she still showed a lot. When my door is ajar, she would open it wide and rest her head on my bed. She also loves sprinting and running to her beanbag. 5th of the 6th, 2019. I mentioned to Jack Montgomery, I don't know what to take a photo of because I don't want to keep taking photos of the same thing. He said, take a photo of the crack in the ground, which inspired me to take a photo of the top of a statue's head which had shit on it. My camera was fully zoomed in taking this photo. It ran out of battery, thus my zoom stayed out. My zoom sticks out like a dog's red lipstick. We'll have to ascertain a new battery. To add to the quirkiness of this day and to keep it still relevant, I notice my pubes are getting extremely long and I need to shave them. 6th of the 6th, 2019. Tate, the man I was praising the other day, is better known by his stage name Ryko. He played a killer show at the laundry bar with other acts, Aura, Black Orchid and Sin Santos. Always good to see the underground scene having people get around it. We got to see Ryko's hard stuff to his more soft, moody tunes. I woke up with a drawing of a Nintendo DS with a cock on top of it on my chest. Don't remember it being put there. 7th of the 6th, 2019. This Friday was our last class before a month off. In this cramped room, David Alagna, Leah Curry, Kira Han, Kathy Ho, and I finalised some assessments. David, a pot-smoking, movie-loving wog. Kira, she has objectively the best style in terms of clothing, photography, and so forth. Her Instagram could be sold at a gallery for millions. She always has good recommendations for films and music videos. Kathy has the best taste in music, and her photography on film cameras is astounding. Leah always keeps you on your toes. 8th of the 6th, 2019. Saturday on this day led me going to undesirable locations with desirable people. Every time I give in to going to our local bar, I regret it and hate it with more of a passion each time. You see the same people you don't want to bother having small talk with. You get the same amount of dumb cunts spilling drinks on you because it's so cramped. You see the same drunk idiot mums who love to tell you they have two kids. You sip expensive beer. You religiously see the douchebag managers slash security and the toxic footy mops. But at least I got to spend time with Marcus Lloyd, somebody you haven't seen in a while. We've gotten a lot closer since high school. 9th of the 6th, 2019. Started early at work on this day, thus my whole 24 hours of this Sunday was focused on seclunas. The whole day led to this point, to this photo, to the gratification and pleasure derived from seeing the machine clock me off. What adds to this satisfaction is the noise it makes, which I will try and replicate. Sucked. 10th of the 6th, 2019. First day of my holiday saw me do something I haven't done in a long time. Sleep in. I assumed my body would naturally wake up at the average time I usually get up. 8. But I must have needed a rest because I didn't awake till 9.30. I got to stay in bed and watch YouTube. Though this day I still had to travel up to the city for the new wave meeting. 11th of the 6th, 2019. After an early morning shift at Seclunas, I caught up with Suede where we did the Sora local routine. From point A, Seclunas, to point B, smashing for breakfast, to point C, op shop, back to point A, Seclunas, so Suede could do some manager bullshit, to point D, her house, then a detour to the house she's gonna be living in soon, back to point D, her house, to point E, bakery to buy a fat donut, to point F, Sora back beach, to point G, Potsy back beach, and back to point A, where my house was. This photo is of Suede at the front of Watts Cottage, a staple monument of Sorrento, a good motive to tie up and explain our day well. We discuss the possibility of moving out next year, together with Sophie. 12th of the 6th, 2019. I did not forget to take a photo this day, but rather thought an image of nothing was suitable. I did nothing but stay in my room due to cancelling multiple flawed plans. I realised I needed a full day of nothing. It can be an extreme pleasure or detriment doing nothing. The more I keep writing, the more pretentious I feel. How can I overcome the fact that this whole project is pretentious? I can't even justify it. The writing isn't smart enough and the images aren't that good. Looking back on what I wrote for this day, I think it was a downer of a day. 13th of the 6th, 2019. Corners of my wall as yet again I stayed in the confines of my room. The day my sister left for India. I began to sit down and attempt to watch a show, The Wire. 
I drank a total of four coffees. I began to read Moonraker, a James Bond book. I started Watch Dogs 2. I cleaned my room. I used social media. I had a shower. I cleaned my car. I write what I just wrote and what I am currently writing as of writing this written wrote words. 14th of the 6th, 2019. Jay and I did the usual op shop grind, totaling 10 stores. We snagged some beauties such as the film camera and a Kony 2012 shirt, seen in image. Over the day, we discussed our opinions on music. 15th of the 6th, 2019. I caught up with a bunch of high school mates I hadn't seen in Yonks. We all drank a few beers around a fire where we talked about the times we were dumb cunts at school. A fire can make any social situation better. The sort of crowd that chucked on a bit of metal, and as the more we got drunk, the louder we would get. Sam Byrne, a mate I hadn't seen in over five years. It was good to see what he'd been up to. He hasn't changed, which is for the best, with his grisly humour, desensitised attitude, and hot takes. It was a while since I saw Raiden Lucas. It is a bad idea drinking with him, because we would always get up to inevitable mischief. I love how him and I can go from a serious, worthy, in-depth conversation to an instant classic joke. Another bloke I've solemnly been missing is Mitch Cadwell, somebody I've known and gone to school with since kindergarten. Been making each other laugh for over 15 years. Since the times of stealing gold from the sandpit, to the time we put our teacher's wireless mouse in her coffee. 16th of the 6th, 2019. In classic Sunday dinner tradition, Suedos, Abby and I got together for dinner. The procedure went like this. Food equals Chinese, location equals warm car at Back Beach. This led to an outcome of eating poorly proportioned meals while listening to Black Eyed Peas a la Funk album, obliterating CDs and having a laugh. The view of the beach was non-existent due to nighttime and fog on windows. We snacked on Italian donuts and did the modern way of social interaction of being on our phones and then discussing what we came across on them, having it as a conversation starter rather than how old people see it as a conversation ender. 17th of the 6th, 2019. The third Monday of June revolved around Nick, Rachel and I meeting in the city to begin shooting my short film Odysseys, Preludes and Grand Delinquents. The first shot saw me dressed up as the character Cheryl Seashell running around the city with a briefcase. It was humiliating having to act around public with my trench coat and slicked back hair. It became dark a lot quicker than expected, so had to finish up early. Afterwards, we went on our way to a new wave meeting. On the way, a homeless man stopped us and said he was going to make a business through smiles, how we were probably struggling like him as filmmakers, and that we were beautiful. This all brightened our days. In the interest of keeping the photos varied, I captured a photo of Luth rolling a dart. Not much I can say about this topic seeing as I don't smoke, though it is still a big part of being 19. The ever presence of addiction, an aesthetic, and the cold fact that I love dart breaks. 18th of the 6th, 2019. This day was meant to be dedicated to shooting more of the Odyssey short film, but after awakening to see God pissing on us, I had to cancel. I still decided to come up to Bo Morris to hang out with Nick. Over a coffee, we discussed our music video ideas, which is undoubtedly one of my favourite parts of being a filmmaker. The discussion and brainstorming. To my delight, Nick told me Luke Miller was free, so he caught up with the fuckhead. We went and bought some donuts. I got a roll of film developed that I had taken photos on with my whack ass camera. They turned out not bad, and they're a nifty reminder of 17th of the 6th, 2019. 19th of the 6th, 2019. With knowledge that Eliza was leaving for her holiday soon, I had to see her before she left. We came to the conclusion of going to Franks and Hoyt Cinema to watch the pre screening of Toy Story 4. Beforehand, we bought the best fucking burger. Toy Story 4 was a bit overhyped, not as sad as I thought it'd be, but it was still really enjoyable and funny. The animation had some crazy details. It was good to hear Eliza is at a good place in her life. She deserves it. 20th of the 6th, 2019. I've been taking advantage of my break by seeing those I can rarely see whilst at uni. Ingrid is one of those people. It's sad I used to see her every day at school, but now only see each other every now and then. Before seeing a random cold struck me like lightning, endlessly sneezing and eyes feeling extremely stoned. After a lot of undeciding, we chose to get chips and gravy from Dunder Street. We killed time waiting for 095, which is our go-to pizza restaurant, by sitting and chatting at Arthur's seat. We enjoyed my margarita and her go-to meal at Safety Beach. 21st of the 6th, 2019. Neve and Kira moved houses, which called for a housewarming. They made it themed, 90s slash early 2000s, which saw me wearing an extra, extra, extra large shirt with the Superman S drawn on it. Extra large jeans, chunky skate shoes, cap backwards, and matrix glasses. In this photo, you can see Neve, Kira, their brothers, Ronan and Aaron. We can also see Sam, Lewis, and Kira's magician boyfriend, who made a motherfucking dart float. We were all crammed in the smoker's alleyway. 
It was enjoyable to hear 2,000 songs, to eat lolly watches, and wear glow sticks. 22nd of the 6th, 2019. On a very tired, hungover Saturday, I worked with Ziggy and Brooke Hutchins. Brooke is someone I got to know through work, but have many indirect connections to, having worked with her sister and brother, and her brother going out with my sister. She started closing with me, allowing us to spend a good amount of time together, and she packs up better than anyone else. She feels like a sister to me. It's good to be able to be so open with her. Then there's Ziggy, who's a dumb cunt. 23rd of the 6th, 2019. Games night with Swade and Abby, which led to the inevitable decay of crumbling relationships and pure hatred for one another. We played a bit of Chinese checkers, where I fucked up from the get-go thinking you could jump over people's shits and get them out. I then resorted to placing my shits in Swade's end, stopping her from winning. We played a bit of Taboo, where we all assumed everybody was shit at their roles. We forgave each other by fighting. My tire went flat, so I had to leave my car and get mum to pick me up. 24th of the 6th, 2019. Today, I had to do adult things. Changing my tire. Dad took me to my car and taught me how to change my tire, which I don't know if it's late to be learning about that at the age of 19, but then again, I only learnt how to tie my shoelaces in year 6, and I still don't know how to swim. 25th of the 6th, 2019. Tonight was taco night with my babes Sophie, Swade, and Tyler. Tyler's hands were noticeably and noteworthy dirtier than usual. We played a game that I can't remember what it was called, but I thought it was hair gel. You had to place your card on the card on the table when you could name what object was on both cards. Swayed us. One. We played celebrity heads and gave each other way too many clues. And we finalised the night with a game where you had to name three things of a certain topic in five seconds. Swayed us. One. And relationships, once again, burnt and perished. Uh, pardon me. 26th of the 6th, 2019. Spend a nice day hanging with Barrick's finest, Delphi. Getting photos developed and op shopping. In juxtaposition, it was a beautiful sunny day in the streets of Frankston. We were surprised of the beauty of this mural seen in photo, so we thought it was perfect. Delphi and I talked endlessly. 27th of the 6th, 2019. Once again, I travelled far distances to see friends. I went to Chapel Street to see Michael Gallagher, Briley Burns, and Andrew Williams to go on an op shop hunt. These three I met through Nick, but now, socialising so much with the Bayside crew, I feel at one with them. We were so distracted by darts, food, and legit stores that we only got around to one op shop. Always good to muck around with them. I jogged on back to the Ninja to go see Annabelle Homecoming at the cinemas with Neve, a shit film that reinforced the fact I hate horror films but at least it did the job of scaring Neve and allowing me to spend time eating cheesecake with her. 28th of the 6th, 2019. On this new wave orientated Friday, I caught up with Nick and Rachel to shoot some more of Odyssey's preludes and grand delinquents. After this, we got to spend some tranquil time with the gangster sheet crew, something that isn't enough and rare compared to last year when we were at uni together. Our presence were presents for one another. Our friendship, if seen as a stock market, our stocks grew at a rapid rate. We are at a point in our friendships that it feels like we've been lifelong friends. They already feel irreplaceable. We understand each other, see through each other, help each other, and all make one another laugh. This afternoon we spent together reinforced my belief of best friends. We got coffee, left her, dinger for the waiter, demolished and polished off chicken and chips, and watched the sun go down. We voyaged to Footscray where we watched New Wave's band, new title Hokusai, play at Wrangler Studio with other bands Claim and Mike Miller, an excellent live show that left me with goosebumps. This is the crew after the show. 29th of the 6th, 2019. After work, I headed to Collingwood where I watched Drunk Mums live with Chipper, Maynard, Minnie and Clayton. The acts beforehand included Girl Germs, an insanely wild performance from an orgasming drummer, screaming guitarist singing She Wants Beer for Dinner, and Negasonic Teenage Warhead on other guitar. I love live shows like this because... I feel like I'm tripping balls. The other pre-act was Sabaya, a rock and roll band straight from the 70s, with flair onesies, a Mexican mechanic stereotype banging his head, and the finale seeing a fake guitar smash. Then Drunk Mums went on, a punk band that makes things go balls to the walls, moshing, crowd surfing, broken camera bags, sweaty men, realising how unfit I am kicking in, chick attempting to crowd surf but only legs getting grabbed and head slamming on ground, headbutts, Shearer jumping off stage, hitting chest like ape while crowd surfing, getting air while watching Maynard demolish others, the cliche shouts of Encore and the band actually pulling through, the unspoken rule of making it your first priority helping people from the ground, 
and so on. 30th of the 6th, 2019. Well, as I did nothing but work today, I thought I'd take a photo of the main street of Sereno and try to write a brief love letter to the place I've called home for 19 years and the place I've taken advantage of. Through there is negatives, I want to continue to focus on the positives in all the images I take. The happiness locked in the confines of the four by six inch photo. The views, the back beach, the hidden locations, the skate park, Patrick's, the primary school, the pine trees, the back streets, the elderly, the sense of community, the peace, the front beach, all define the place that is a part of me. First of the 7th, 2019. The start of my week followed Joel come down to my house where we booked flights to Japan for November. We made a list of towns to visit, Tokyo, Osaka and Kyoto, and a list of activities and things to see. Japan is the main country I've always wanted to visit, due to enjoying a lot of their entertainment, with animes including Neon Genesis, Evangelion, and Cowboy Bebop. I've always wanted to visit a country with an entirely different culture. I will now be worrying about money for the rest of the year. 2nd of the 7th, 2019. Another day spent entirely in the confines of my house. I finished the book Moonraker, written by Ian Fleming. I bought this book when I was in primary school, when I had a strange obsession for James Bond. I finally read it for the first time. It was a nice and easy read, and was fun and enjoyable. The villain, Sir Hugo Drax, was one of the most well-written characters I've ever read. The pacing was a bit out of whack, with action only happening in the last 50 pages, though the suspense for the villain was built well. Fleming wrote in a way where I actually cared about the small details of the car's locations, what Bond was eating and drinking, etc. Though the book is extremely sexist. 3rd of the 7th, 2019. I was accompanied by Jay on this day of location scouting. In preparation for my music video I'm directing for Hokusai's song, 13, I went to Flinders and Cape Shank to gaze where I can shoot. Afterwards, we got lunch at Flinders, where right after taking this photo of Jay with his yellow ass jumper, yellow ass phone, yellow ass hair, and yellow ass juice, this roll of film, which had only 7 out of 36 photos taken, rewinded. 4th of the 7th, 2019. Finished the shoot of Odyssey's Preludes and Grand Delinquents. With the help from my cinematographers Rachel and Nick, we accomplished this whack film. After guerrilla shooting in a forest, we caught up with Luke Miller for coffee and lunch where he ended up being the actor for the green screen man. He was thoroughly confused by the whole thing. The rest of the shoot saw me getting pulled back by a rope attached to my foot, falling in sand holes, running in water with my clothes on, and getting fake blood everywhere. This is the aftermath with everything I just slammed in my boot and will worry about later date. 5th of the 7th, 2019. After making tacos with mum for dinner, I popped over to Harris Patterson's house, who also lives in Sereno. I pre-drank with them without the post-drank of going out. I hung with Harris, Braden, and a few of their mates from Melbourne. In the corner of the image is Harris's dog, Milky, and its clinical anxiety kicking in. 6th of the 7th, 2019. Another day of taking advantage of no responsibilities. These sort of days will dwindle away with age, but I'm already at an age where you feel you need to find responsibilities, or else you shame yourself for being lazy. To not feel so lazy, I force the responsibility of beginning to write a new script. The story follows a middle class bogan's life tumbling down after the weird phenomenon of pink and long fingernails growing on his hand. 7th of the 7th, 2019. To my happiness, after work, I caught up with Sophie, where we attempted to get Mexican. This fell through, so instead we went to 095 for pizza. We discussed the philosophy of what's in or out of the box. Afterwards, we went to our usual post-dinner posse of Arthur's seat, where we got to encounter more hoons. 8th of the 7th, 2019. This week saw uni start back up. I drove all the way to my sister's to park. The class, which started at 9.30am, finished in one motherfucking hour. Jack, Eddie and I traversed a pop culture store where surprisingly we spent no money. We jogged on to Taco Bell for lunch and a beer at the reasonable time at 12.30pm. Jack and I continued to the workshop bar for a late lunch beer and pizza. We cruised to another nifty bar for an early dinner. We sailed to meet up with Nick, Michael and Tate where we had an Asian cuisine dinner with one beer, one free. Afterwards migrating to the old bar in Fitzroy for an unreasonable amount of jugs and broken bottles against our heads. Seen in picture is Hokusai playing live with what was another ripper show. I proceeded to let Marlo, who's trained in martial arts, kick me in the stomach. I got back to my sister's to find I was locked out, so then headed to Holly's to have a place to stay. 9th of the 7th, 2019. Gleefully, I have Tuesdays off this semester. 
As I preempted, I would not be able to spend time with dad on his birthday tomorrow. I organized to go out for dinner with him tonight. We went to Cakes and Ale in Sereno, which was painfully full of wankers and the prestigious. I bought duck, which I would prefer to eat bacon a fifth of the price. Purposefully didn't take a photo of dad there so I didn't scare the old white rich people, giving them a heart attack. Instead, I got a photo of him in his usual posse, where he lays every night and watches the TV. 10th of the 7th, 2019. The morning of dad's birthday before I headed to uni, I gifted dad with a six pack of St. Andrew's Brewery beers and a couple of gold class cinema tickets. In adult tradition, he still went to work. In a soppy and corny fashion, I want to thank dad for everything. Even though he definitely will never get to this part of the film, I still want to have expressed my appreciation in a legitimate form other than a shitty card. I want it to have been stamped in history. So dear dad, thank you for carving me into the person I am. People, including I, like to be burdened so we can have things to complain about and parents are usually an easy target. Unfortunately, there's nothing legitimate to complain about you. I'm not burdened, I'm blessed. And annoyingly, you're near perfection. 11th of the 7th, 2019. Subsequent to uni, I went to Holly's where she was having a few people over for a cheeky alcoholic beverage and smoke of the devil's lettuce. I came to a content conclusion that this is the post high school version of house parties, small gatherings with close friends. We took photos, discussed ideas, made surrealist jokes, and so on. 12th of the 7th, 2019. Proceeding a day sleeping in during the pinnacle of winter weather, I had Jack's birthday. In realization, I haven't said this Jack's full name yet, as unfortunately I have not seen or taken a photo of him this whole year. Jack Pohl, for his birthday, had a gathering with the theme of any era from the 1900s. Most people did nothing, or only put in half assed attempts. I wore a huge suit, which sleeves hung below my ass. It was good to see Jack and other old faces, such as Arden Stevenson, Zed, and Dallas Cleaver. Such a good setup as well. A hallway shaped outdoor section with big speaker, pool table, lights, couch, and fire. Was good to see Flash, Jack's dog. I hadn't seen him in a long time. This night locked in the beginning of my tobacco addiction. 13th of the 7th, 2019. At some point during this day at work, I had the urge to get home and play my Nintendo 64. This project has made me noticeably more reminiscent of my past. I keep thinking of things I'll see in this film when I'm older that will make me feel nostalgia. I would say a big part of my personality is the tendency to want and feel nostalgia, even to things that don't relate to my past, such as my Super 8 camera. I like that feeling of comfort and love mixed with sadness and melancholy. So I whipped out my Nintendo 64 to play Mario Kart 64, Destruction Derby, though to my disappointment GoldenEye is broken. A vivid memory of playing this console was forcing mum to play it with me. 14th of the 7th, 2019. Pictured is swayed at the tasters table at Seclunas. These days I don't dread going to work on Sundays because I'm able to work with suede. We end up just chilling and conversing instead of actually doing work. If life was perfect, she would finish at the same time as me, but she's only there for a couple of hours before she leaves. Today, I led her to staying longer by forging a fabricated story, making it up on the fly just so she would stay and listen. She was so intrigued by it, she was annoyed when I told her I was making it up just to make her stay. 15th of the 7th, 2019. In frame as a park, a park I stumbled across after finishing uni. I was on my way after buying a barrack to an unknown destination, knowing I had a whole day to kill before New Wave meeting. As I walked to this unfamiliar part of the city, I had that exploration feeling I felt in America, finding cool spots, and it reminded me of why I love the city so much. After sitting and reading, I caught up with Jack, where we slept at uni. I recommended Jack as a graphic designer for New Wave, so I introduced everybody to him at the meeting. 16th of the 7th, 2019. After months of struggling to find time to hang with Jacob Maynard, we finally found a time. I had to buy a couple of things in Rosie, so I linked up with him there, where we attempted to demolish something I don't eat enough these days. A HSP. Maynard and I discussed the shittiness of Rosebud. I enjoy our conversations because they go on such tangents. We rarely have the same point of view, but that just makes the conversations more interesting and we both learn things from it. A quote from Maynard that day. We take it for granted in high school how everybody's timetables are the exact same. 17th of the 7th, 2019. Two days prior to Delphine Burgess's birthday, before she hits the age that I'm fearing this whole year, 20. She decided to go bowling, do karaoke and laser tag while still at young age and before the official adult age of 20. This is an example of why I adore Delphi, the deeper thought she puts into everything and 
the sentimentality she applies to everything. This is why for her birthday, I brought her some books and wrote her a poem about how her youth will live on and old age won't change that. She's the only person I know that would fully appreciate it. After performing poorly at bowling, I got to do karaoke for the first time ever. I definitely was too sober for it and it was a lot more cringe than I hoped for. After getting some photos from the photo booth, we played laser tag where my fitness was put to the test. I learned something tonight about the unconditional love we have and have to give to our old friends from high school. Though we can get annoyed with each other, we still, at the end of the day, will love one another. 18th the 7th, 2019. Blah, 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 blah. I had uni, blah, 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 blah. I drove and stuff, blah, 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 which led to the fun stuff, going to the cinemas with Neve. I just had to worry about this project. I feel like for a lot of the days, I'm explaining what's already obvious in the photo, though I don't want to write about other stuff in the day. That's boring. We watched Crawl, directed by Alexandra Aja. A tense film that is paced well, good set and sound design, though some shocking VFX and characters. I did not give a fuck about any of the characters except the dog. Perfect film for a cinema though. 19th of the 7th, 2019. For the weekend of Neve's birthday, we got an apartment in the city. After driving Eliza up and getting the wrong Macca's order, getting three times what I ordered, parking at Crown and getting the wrong tram, we arrived at the apartment to meet Neve, Cassie Reed, Lockie Huxtable, Sophie, Annabelle, Jesse, Liv Henderson, Eliza, and Beth Saraceno. We pre-drank to the Piccolo drinking game where Beth and Liv reminded me about the time I got fully naked on the D floor of BTV. We headed to Peach Bar for some drinks we could barely see and then proceeded to a club which I shall not name because the owner is a wet sock. After getting back early so I could sleep, I was awoken so I could let everybody in from the staircase they were stuck in. 20th of the 7th, 2019. This Saturday night was dedicated to booking accommodation with Joel for Japan. We spent about six hours staring at our laptops looking for the best and cheapest places to stay. We spent a lot more than we thought we would have had to, but we were glad at least we had beds to sleep on. Finishing up so late, we got barely any time to chill and play games. 21st of the 7th, 2019. Following my weekly pattern, I had work with Luke. We broke up this pattern by making food figurines and eating cheese corn chips with Basil's surprisingly good vegan dip. A pattern that follows every Sunday is quoting Casey Fry videos. For the enlightenment of my audience, my Sunday work schedule goes like this. Arrive at 11am, act like I'm doing stuff for multiple hours through the mirage of pulling apples forward and cutting the tops of bananas. Find an appropriate balance of socialising with co-workers. Clean the floor with bleach. Clean the bench. Sadly say my goodbyes to suede. Bring trolleys down. Pack all veg away. Water appropriate veg and then clock off. 22nd of the 7th, 2019. Seen in this new wave group photo at our meeting is RGB LED lights. After some members did some company work, we accumulated some money to allow us to afford some bitchin' lights. We've been shooting portraits and group shots in lead up to August 1st. August 1st sees a big rebranding for new wave. A new logo, more content, a revised film crew, clothing brand, and website. 23rd of the 7th, 2019. Following the news of a cancelled uni short film shoot, I hit up Luth and Nick to let them know I'm free as I knew they wanted to brainstorm some project ideas. I travelled to Nick's in Beau Morris where him and I devised a plot for a short film to enter into a short film competition. We wanted to make a relatable teenager, simple story. For the competition, it had to revolve around excess. It's going to be about a group of friends doing an excess amount of events in one night. Caught up with Luther, where we devised an idea for the music video of GTFOMD, which stands for Get the Fuck Off My Dick. This photo was captured straight after my realization I forgot to take a photo, and right before Luther was about to leave me. 24th of the 7th, 2019. First day of Stephen Frost's shoot for his uni short film, Devil's Day Off. My role as cinematographer, Jack, sound recordist, Eddie, first AD, and David, Gaffer. Our location was this vintage warehouse slash someone's actual house in Preston. We turned the place into multiple office spaces. The shoot went smoothly and finished early. Went back to Jack's for a beer, roamed chapel for a bit, and then stayed at my sister's. 25th of the 7th, 2019. Tonight, New Wave performed at Laundry Bar. Due to a 7am crew call time, I had to awake at 5.30am. Arriving at Balfe Park in Brunswick, we got an early coffee and prepared for our shots at the park. 
We also finished early this morning, so Jack and I had a lot of time to kill before the new wave gig. We went back to my sister's where we watched Workaholics, then traveled to Chapel Street where we got lunch at a neat jukebox diner that actually saw the workers ride roller skates and each table had a mini jukebox. We then traveled back to his place where we had a couple of beers and watched some comedy specials. After traveling even more, we arrived at Holly's place for pre-drinks. After some nangs, a terrible joke and a jog to the train, we arrived at Laundry Bar, where New Wave played a hell of a gig, once again making the crowd the loudest. Our final travel for the night was back to Jack's to hit the hay. 26th of the 7th, 2019. Last day of Stephen's shoot saw us shooting at his house in Oak Park. We shot the final scenes of the devil arriving home after a surprisingly joyful day off. I proceeded back to Serono where I caught many Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z 27th of the 7th, 2019. A new weekly tradition for Secluners is advertising our corn chips with the help of homemade guacamole. Seen in this picture is Taylor and Brooke, the Hutchins sisters, making the guac. This motherfucking guac makes me look forward to going into work and keeps me going as I snack on it every 10 minutes. I worry for how I'm going to cope at a new job where food isn't so readily available or stealable. I get abnormally hungry in a work environment. Another great thing about work is the back room. It's a hub for socializing and staying away from customers. 28th of the 7th, 2019. It is rare these days for the whole fam to be at home at once and especially at dinner time. By chance, Rose and I were free. We devoured passable food as Rose told boring stories about her boyfriend as dad attentively consumed the news and his mum pretended to listen to Rose when she was mentally criticizing her own food and thinking of ways to improve. I find it strange how we all crave the presence of family, but once we're actually together, we all act nonchalant, careless, or even at times loathe each other's presence. I guess it's something to do with the warmth and easiness you don't realize you've felt until you've separated. As of writing at a time when I am separated, I can already miss this dinner and the simple beauty it brought. 29th of the 7th, 2019. With another structurally integral Monday ahead of me, I attempted to think of what to take a picture of. The options were minimal in terms of something original I could write off, so I decided to wait until after study finished, after New Wave meeting and after eating Hungry Jacks to then take a photo of my car parked at Cannonook Footy Oval. I saw it as an option to talk about a place that before this, I registered as an insignificant place in my life. Though after some contemplation and now writing bullshit, I realized how many times I've parked here to travel to the city. Even the simplest of places may hold some reminiscent and melancholic memory, and this photo is to test that. Though it is not at all reminiscent and melancholic, it is a fucking car park. 30th of the 7th, 2019. With as little as homework as a plan for today, and as a safeguard for not spending money, and saving for Japan, I stayed in the house for the day. I procrastinated by watching The Wire, which I'm really getting into, and I'm tempted to write a review, but I'm still gonna wait until I've fully finished it. After completing Z work, I sat at my computer for multiple hours, looking over old photos and vids from high school. 31st of the 7th, 2019. Come this Wednesday, I went to Jordan's to do a quick location scout for my uni short film. Come afternoon, I arrived at Nick's, where we rendezvoused with Rachel. Come Rachel, we bounce to buy props and get lunch. Come Nix, I drew a game plan for the rest of the night for Briley's birthday. It's as follows. Nick Ray's at 13. Drink, water, cigarettes, three. Travel by undetermined to Briley's house. Drink, all of them. Cigarettes, eight. Travel by fuck knows to Sandy Pub. Drink, zero. Cigarette, Connor has one and cries. Travel by boss to send it. Drink, too many. Cigarettes, infinite. Travel by taxi to either Rats, Revs, or Nicks, where we all are dead. Drink, vomit. Sigs, out. The night, instead, followed as. Luther, arriving. Drink one long neck VB. Rach, drink a couple of can wines and feels it. Nick, attempt to drink one beer and feel nauseated. Dance in Nick's bottom room. Draw on whiteboard. Michael picks us up and drives to Briley's. Drink other long neck VB. Sit around a fire. Write our names without piss on the road. Get Uber to send it. Have a shit one. Attempt to get kicked out. Leave and do a 45 minute walk back to Macca's. Then Uber back to Nick's. The long walk reminded me of the old days when we used to walk long distances in the middle of a cold, deserted night where what kept you walking was the deep and meaningful conversation and the final destination. 1st of the 8th, 2019. I awoke with that feeling of purgatory between hungry and sick, tired and awake, and headache and thirsty. I questioned what I would take a photo of. 
I told Rachel I didn't want to take a photo of uni, even though it was the only thing I was doing. Quote unquote, just take a photo of it, that's what you're doing. Which put me into my place and reminded me of my original project philosophy. Take a photo of the biggest part of the day, no matter how boring. This image sees David in our sound class, posing, playing on the keyboard, even though the computer is clearly not logged in. I didn't need to go to uni today, but being hungover, I would have got depressed for being unproductive. David did our huge of discussing upcoming films and watching trailers. 2nd of the 8th, 2019. Usually I'd try to find a new wave project to work on, on a day off, but due to planning pre-production for junk, I kept it free. Time allowed me to meet up with Neve, where I helped her do some location scouting for her photo shoot. We got glorious hot chips and gravy from Dunder Street, Milk Bar. We sat and watched Old Mate One-Legged Seagull, called Lefty. 3rd of the 8th, 2019. For Ingrid's birthday, we got drinks, excluding myself due to driving, at Casa. Not much to say about these nights. Just a joyful time seeing my high school group socialising, laughing and everybody's personalities coming out. The immaturity is still apparent as our culture of throwing stuff into each other's as drinks continued. In frame is 20-year-old Ingrid, who for another nine months has to wait for her present, and Shayla Murray, a close friend of Ingrid who, if I had to compliment after only having a few instances of socialising, it would be about her cynical humour. 4th of the 8th, 2019. Having been over a year working for Matt, it only came to me now that I ought to get a photo of him. Seeings as I've seen him literally every Sunday this year. Matt has taught me more in the past few months than everything I've learned combined in the past four years working here. A lot of this information I render useless outside of work, but it's nevertheless helpful here. Through his self-deprecating, cynical, socially aware humour and quick wit, I'm always in a constant state of laughter around him, not to mention the stories from his past. He's generous, genuine and thoughtful, yet in the same person is somebody who will abuse me for saying these things, mock me, never let me forget that I'm saying this, and will definitely think I'm on the more flamboyant side of my sexuality. 5th of the 8th, 2019. In a state of rush having to leave for uni, I had to quickly finish this roll of film before taking it to get developed. So I took a photo of my fruit bowl. The bananas represent the male friends in my life. The mandarins represent the female friends in my life. The lemon represents my family. And the pear represents a yummy fruit. 6th of the 8th, 2019. In confession, I have sinned against the rules of this project. Whilst not necessarily a rule, but I aimed and strived to write on each day to fully recollect that day and note any small facts I may forget. But due to such a busy schedule and a procrastination to write, I am 11 days behind writing for this day. In my fairness, I did write a summary of words in my notes app to spark reminders. This week shows myself traveling to Phillip Island for Jack's short film shoot. I anticipated going to see where he lives after now being good mates with him for several months. I also look forward to getting insider info on what it was like to grow up there. After two hours of traveling, I showed up to a cafe for our first scene to shoot. My role for this shoot was gaffer, meaning I dealt with lighting, which is usually the easiest and most non-productive role. Steven was sound recordist, Eddie, cinematographer, David, first AD, and director, Jack. The short follows a teen boy who gets walking corpse syndrome. He's made attempts to get him to realise he's not dead. After finishing, we went back to his upscale house that we would be staying at. We went to a local bar to play trivia. This was a first for me. It was accompanied with the best fucking lamb and halloumi burger and stellar beer in a glass chalice. Seeing as we were the youngest amongst elderly people, we named our group Fetus. We won one round, winning a box of favourites, and came second overall. We got back where we slept in an outside back room, which gave off the vibe of a school camp, except we had beers. With the fire crackling, hanging with classmates, and talking ourselves till we slept like babies. Scene is our sleeping area, and the classmates with their beers. 7th of the 8th, 2019. We awoke early to begin shooting. Eddie felt immensely sick, and since my role is the most expendable, I had to do his role as well. We filmed a grotty scene where one mate has his leg broken back towards him and the other mate boffs all over him. One thing I've learnt about Phillip Island is there's an unusual amount of murders here. After the shoot, Jack showed us his grandparents' property with the sites of sculptures, a church, slash, art room and their own lake. We went to the San Remo where we played pool accompanied with a beer. We got back to have beer and pizza where we played Dungeons and Dragons. We learnt that Stephen was a dungeon master meaning he could narrate and journey us through the game. Some of the most fun I've had in Yonks. 
I want to invest a lot of time into it. I, Xanax the Scoundrel, had been sentenced after stealing from the locals to find the cure to a disease that has been killing innocent people and making them lose their hair. I was teamed with an elf, a man slash werewolf, a mage, and an ent. We hunted some pig to eat. We stumbled across a cottage which I tried to sneak us inside, but we were caught. After offering him some pig and to find the cure for his wife, he told us to find a king frog, which would lead us to where the queen witch beholds the cure. We stumbled across a camp of one man where we decided to threaten him for info. Turns out it was a trap and a gang attacked us. We fought back and violently won. Whilst I was stealing stuff from a tent, I found a map to the frog king. On our way, we got trapped in a small city infested by huge rats. We turned the rat into a small spider. We got to the frog's castle that was keeping the witch hostage. The mage went like a ghost through the walls. The ant used a potion to control the frog king whilst the elf and I talked to the witch. She said if we let her escape, she will cure everyone. The ant made the frog let her go. She cured everyone, but as I tried stealing from her, she froze me to death. 8th of the 8th, 2019. We shot a scene where the mate tries to convince him he is alive through proving that there's blood still rushing through him and trying to give him a boner whilst watching porn. Instead, he gets the boner and awkwardly gets up and accidentally hits him with it. This is that boner. David, the first AD, offered the possibility of finishing the shoot early, in which we did. On my way back, I fell. I started the show Euphoria, caving in to the bombardments of requests to watch it, especially from Delphi. I will give a full review once finished. 9th of the 8th, 2019. This morning I woke up feeling an immense sadness. I wouldn't usually write about this, but I thought about how open I've been through this project, and today's no exception. This year I've come to many conclusions about mental health. I've become open-minded selfishly after going through some issues caused by panic attacks. I always shrugged off people that claimed to have mental issues, being raised in a get-over-it mindset and the belief they were attention-seeking. After being around people that are now open-minded, I've realized its prevalence and its habit to come without any stimuli. I don't claim to have it hard, I now understand its harsh power. To overcome, I caught up with Neve and Marcus where we bought coffee keep cups, as 7-Eleven introduced free coffees to whoever bring them in. We did this directly after having chips and gravy, and already a coffee at Dundas Street Milk Bar. I also bought a black hoodie, which is a first for me in years. 10th of the 8th, 2019. Stefan invited a few fellas to his house in Main Ridge for some beers. I reached his through powerful rain. We chatted about uni whilst Blake, Jay, Marcus and Tyler showed up. My plan was to drive home after, but after temptation struck me, I sank some piss. We played King's Cup, which was surprisingly a first for me. Jay had to drink the dreaded cup. We also played Outbursts, where we had to get our team members guess a word without saying the word. Later, we hotboxed Lloyd's car, which led me to do something I hadn't done in a while. Boff, and do the preteen thing of sleep on floor. 11th of the 8th, 2019. Preceding work, all I did was the usual of YouTube, watch another episode of show, eat dinner, and write about the day. Something I thought deserved an image is the notebooks in which I am writing on about these days. One book full, another nearly done, and a new one purchased. A query I have is how I should present these pages in the final product, scanned versions or photos. 12th of the 8th, 2019. To begin my week, I had to drive all the way to my uni to pick up equipment for my shoot. Shout out David for helping me. Instead of attempting to find parking in a city or spending copious amounts, I instead drove to a further station to then get the train back in. Had to do this for the usual meeting. This was a fond meeting, as we talked about our future wants from New Wave and our passion slash commitment to it. I found some nunchucks. I also luckily got my ticket to Beyond the Valley, first event that I've anticipated and sitted waiting for tickets to come on sale. 13th of the 8th, 2019. To prepare for my shoot, I bought some final props and snacks for catering. I hit up Marcus to come with. I never want to traverse Rosia Plaza alone. We got them free 7-Eleven coffees, battled through the plaza, and went to Lloyd's local dart destination, where there is a perfect view of junkies passing by on bikes. My stress levels went through the roof, as I made sure all props, equipment, and food were ready. I got to Jordan's, which is where I set the film, in a teenager's den. We set designed, moved furniture, and placed props. We shot scene of Noah shaving head for real, Jack getting a stick and poke for real, and I faking putting a ciggy on my nipple. We also filmed a montage of us doing dumb shit. 
14th of the 8th, 2019. I woke up early to file manage all of yesterday's footage and I bought more food. Tonight was also a night shoot so we rendezvoused for some fat burgers for dinner. Our second day of shooting begun, filming the boys discussing shooting up heroin. To give context, my short is about three teenage boys who are making a short film about the bad side of adolescence. They want to shoot the various acts and shenanigans teenagers get up to. The list follows underage drinking, smoking, body vandalism, and leads to heroin. They argue over method acting shooting up heroin. Trevor Mitchum Cherry, the one who wants to shoot up the heroin, is played by me. Ned Rudolph, the one who is in the middle, is played by Jack Montgomery. Welsh Williams, the one who is strongly against it, is played by Noah Soul. Cinematographer, David. Gaffer, Jack. First AD, Stephen. Sound, Eddie. 15th of the 8th, 2019. After getting home at the very beginning of the day, I had to get up at 6.30am to do file management and prepare everything. This was tiring and stressful, but I came to the realisation that this is the life of a director. I would be doing this for months on end with probably less sleep if I wanted to be doing this as a career. We shot during the day as Noah had the days off. We had to disguise the room as night time. We did this by putting black bin bags behind the windows. Today saw us shooting the scene where Sledge, the drug dealer, shows up to bring heroin, played by Nick Ray. A funny day exemplified by Nick pulling off the outlandish odd character. We wrapped early which allowed me to get home and have some rest. 16th of the 8th, 2019, final day of shoot. I anticipated today to be a full on day due to having to shoot the last scene and finishing what we missed on Wednesday. We pulled off everything, shooting the scene where I shoot up the heroin and supposedly OD. I faked boff by breaking up biscuits, mixing with water, and then microwaving. And that's a wrap. I always contemplate after directing whether I think I'm adequate to pursue this as a career. I feel my personality goes against the traits of a director, being too nice and finding awkward social situations incredibly hard can often stop me from putting my hand down and I find myself agreeing with actors too much. I find peace in the fact that there is ways I can still be enforceful in a nice way. I just need to learn it. This is the day my camcorder died. I will one day dedicate a day to talking about this lost treasure. 17th of the 8th, 2019. Saturdays are often a struggle for me in terms of money. I usually have spent all my money by then and I don't get paid until Tuesday, so I'm always apprehensive on going out. I decided to stay in and just finish the book Stoner by the author John Williams. Upon finishing, I've come to the realization it's the most ever I've been invested in a book and character. The ending left me sad and I was affected by every up and down in the book. I had been semi-searching for this book since last year. Around this time last year, a random and sudden fear of death came upon me. For weeks, most of my thoughts ended in thinking about death and nothingness. I remember being in a bookstore and seeing this book and after reading the blurb, Quote, Stoner tells the story of the conflicts, defeats, and victory of the human race that pass unrecorded by history and reclaims the significance of an individual life. End of quote. I put the book down after I felt haunted by a book that may answer my worries. A year later, I found the book and finished it. Being set in the early 1900s, the setting and characters are inevitably boring for somebody born in my time. But what kept me going was the poetic and beautiful way it describes the most dull topics. It also went into taboo topics, which I had never read in a book before, death and love. It spoke with such maturity that I'm coming to terms with as a 19 year old. The book is old fashioned with its depiction of women. When a book can change the way I process my reality, finding beauty in the smallest situations, I know it's good. 18th of the 8th, 2019. In pursuit of an original photo in amongst this repetitive and tedious Sunday, I took liberty in taking a photo of my breakfast. It is what I have been eating for over 200 days this year, toast with peanut butter. At work, when discussing my future prospects with Abby, I drew up a table of the possible courses I could undertake for uni next year and wrote the pros and cons for each. I had advanced diploma of screenwriting at RMIT, the pros being the main subject I want to do and find interesting, and I know the uni and area well, cons, same uni, and two years only for an advanced diploma. Then there was the Advanced Diploma of Screen and Media at Swinburne, pros and cons. Pros will get a lot out of it. It's only a year, a new uni and people. Cons, already done this course and could be a waste of time. There's the Bachelor of Screenwriting at Melbourne, pros, would get a lot out of it. And a new uni, cons, hard to get into, three long years and don't know much about it. 
And then there's the Bachelor of Media and Communications at RMIT. Pros, easy to get into. Good certificate. Cons, too long. Same uni. Would be too much theory. 19th of the 8th, 2019. As per the uni's instructions, I had to drop off equipment to my building by 9.30am. Thankfully, I did not forget anything. To fill in the gap between then and New Wave meeting, I decided to go to Astor Theatre to a 1.45pm screening of Quentin Tarantino's new film, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. The Astor Theatre had posters from inside the world of the universe. They had a big curtain with the title of the movie on it, and they played music and ads from the 60s to get us in the mood, which reinforced my love for the cinema. I shall comment on the film tomorrow. It was a 35mm print of the film, allowing us to see the dust and scratches that Tarantino would want. 20th of the 8th, 2019. As uni begins to slow down, so does my workload. I had the day off and did nothing that warrants description. Earlier on in the year, for Dad's birthday, I bought him Gold Class Cinema tickets. We waited for Once Upon a Time to come out. I found out that Gold Class is unnecessary. You pay an extra $35 for a comfy seat, the chance to spend an unreasonable amount on food, and nothing more. It was good to watch the film for a second time, to pick up new things and to fully understand why a lot of the scenes are in there. I was anticipating this film for a long time, ever since it was announced, being a fan of Tarantino and him being one of the directors getting me into films. I usually attempt to avoid watching trailers and reading info for films I'm looking forward to due to not wanting to spoil anything, but I broke this moral rule because of how excited I was. After watching the first time, I adored its world building and the way it creates an atmosphere. I love Brad Pitt's alpha male character, the soundtrack and the way it teases the songs, the many cameos and all the real life characters. I loved how they used actual old cameras to mirror old television, the open-endedness of some scenes, though my dislikes included how a lot of the dialogue fell flat and how it could have included a lot more interesting scenes. Got McDonald's with the rents afterwards, which is something that hasn't happened for a good 10 years. 21st of the 8th, 2019. This date is the day my mother was born. I will not disclose the year as she would disapprove of that. Not only do I owe her for harvesting me, I also owe her for nurturing, caring, and creating a standard of living around me that at times I honestly believe I don't deserve. I will never be able to grasp the emotional and physical hardships she has gone through over me, nor would I want to. It's something I can only appreciate and acknowledge. At times I see my unconditional love for her as a burden, but the older I get, the more I realize how she deserves more than unconditional love, and that from this age forward, I have to supply her with the same effort. Birthdays these days consist of finding times in our busy schedules to spend an inadequate amount of time at a dining place and to chin wag over food. So we went to a cafe in Sereno to down some fruit toast as we had an unbroken conversation. It doesn't seem like much and it isn't, but as we wither and age, so does our free time. I had to leave early to meet with Stephen to have a meeting about editing his film. There wasn't too much to it and it only lasted a few minutes, him giving me the footage and so we said our goodbyes. In late planning, Delphi and I decided to go to Cinema Nova to see Once Upon a Time, which would be my third time this week, consecutively. Another detriment due to her schedules is my time seeing Delphi. In knowledge that she was going to the same uni as me this year, we promised to see each other plenty, though nights like this are unfortunately a rarity. We got told to shut the fuck up by a woman seated in front. We decided to drown this sorrow with cheap wine and Asian food. 22nd of the 8th, 2019. On my train ride to uni, I started the book The Secret Agent by Joseph Conrad. I struggled on focusing on this book or deciding to focus on the junkie in front of me's imaginary phone call with an imagination far beyond me and the storytelling just as ingenious as the book in my hand. I rocked up to my sound class late, underestimating the human construct of time. Nothing was being taught and everybody was finishing off an assessment which I could not continue as it was on my computer at home. This day then became deemed pointless. On the way to the train with Eddie, we went into an Asian grocery store that had opened up. It was joyful seeing all the whack for Westerners brands, odd flavoured chips and drinks, strange candy and such other items. It got me very excited for my trip to Japan and to discover and taste everything. I walked out with Migorang flavoured chips, a random chode Red Bull and a spaghetti bun. All cheap as chips. 23rd of the 8th, 2019. Even though I see Suede every weekend at work, which is more consistent than most people in my life, it never fully satisfies our want to see each other, so we arranged this Friday morning to satisfy that want. We got breakfast at a nifty little cafe in Rye, where we pushed through the cold and uncomfortable chairs with each other's warmth and comfortable sonas. We talked about this and that. What we talked about feels unnecessary to include as our conversations will continue until our deaths. It was cut early as homework takes precedence at our age. 
For this Friday night, I went to St. Andrew's Brewery with Neve, Marcus, and Cassie Reed. Cassie is one of those outlier teenagers that is above maturity for her age, and though she is amidst the battle of year 12, she still finds time to be a cool cat. I hope our relationship goes up from here. We went back to Marcus's to play Adult Outbursts and attempted to play SingStar on PS2. 24th of the 8th, 2019. Title of this day, The Adventures of Missing Dog. Whilst at work, I came from upstairs to see a dog in the store after we've closed the doors. I get told that there was no owner with the dog for ages, so they kept him. The dog, which I have no idea what breed it is, did not have a collar with a name or number on it. It had a little stick, which it insisted I throw. When I would, he would pick it up and chew a bit off every time, to a point where there wasn't even any parts able to be picked up. The dog didn't seem the slightest bit sad about being away from its owner, and rather enjoyed the company of new people. As I had to take Brooke home, we got the dog in my car, which was to my unfortune, as I am allergic to dogs. We tried taking it to the vet, but it was closed. Brooke was worried she couldn't take it home because she has two other dogs. We tried calling some other staff, but that was no success. We called Matt, but he was worried about his bunny rabbit. I couldn't take it home because Elvis would eat him for supper and could not keep him in the house because I'm allergic. I ended up leaving the dog with Brooke, where she snuck it to her room. Unfortunately, I did not have my camera in the car, so I was not able to capture an image of it. So instead, I attempted to draw what it looked like. And this is the result. Update, my car is still giving me allergic reactions, but they handed it to the vet where they located the owners. Goodbye, dog. The end. 25th of the 8th, 2019. Finally finished the show, The Wire. It is definitely the best show I've seen, but still not my personal favourite, as Breaking Bad still takes the cake. It is so well done in terms of realism, writing, and acting. Everything seems so grounded and factual. I generally learnt a lot and became a lot more open-minded about certain things. I got so invested in these characters and the setting. I adore the whole structure of the show and how each season focuses on different aspects of Baltimore. I loved how it balanced action with the mundane yet powerful scenes, never being too over the top. They pull off show-not-tell techniques so incredibly well. The film used can make some shots look exquisite. Some of the cinematography and editing can be a bit outdated, but everything else is so calculated and superb. It answers everything with a satisfying ending that also leaves a good amount to be questioned. After realising that I still had a lot of my school books in my wardrobe, I decided to take action with them. My original plan was to set it all on fire directly after completing school, but I never got around to it. To overcome the sentimentality that was stopping me from doing it, I decided I could make a school book collage, where I go through all the books and cut out any doodles and writings that I may find meaningful. 26th of the 8th, 2019. Helped David pick up uni equipment as he helped me out. I then attended the weekly New Wave meeting. I got accepted into the screenwriting course at RMIT. I stayed at Rose's preempting the early start at a location close to hers the next day. Rose's house in Camberwell, conveniently yet inconveniently placed outside the station. I've always had fond memories of the share houses Rose has had, and this one is growing on me. I always saw them as a symbol for fun adult uni life, and the freedom from parents and peninsula, and always being with friends. 27th of the 8th, 2019. This week sees my uni group shooting David Short. The story follows a businessman getting an ominous, creepy call from an anonymous man who knows every detail about him. Roles include I as the sound recordist, which is the most tedious, strenuous, and uncomfortable role, which I cannot complain about enough, David, the director, Jack, first AD, Stephen, cinematographer, and Eddie, gaffer. This shoot was made complex by the small space we had to shoot in, shown in picture, only allowing the actor, the cameraman, in the room whilst recording, leaving the director and first AD to popping in before and after. Also the fact that the building is also a used office space, meaning we have to be quiet and the workers don't. Also the two fucking hour trip home. We shot the scenes of the caller, whose spoiler warning is the same person as who he calls. A nifty bit of world building David has implemented is all these file boxes that the caller has scattered around him with all names on it. To imply what he is doing, he has done to many people. Each box has names of teachers and the crew. 28th of the 8th, 2019. Second day of shooting. Shooting scene of the man receiving the phone call. We had more room today and the offices seemed a lot more quiet. Being sound recorders continued to be a drag. I drove to the shoot, which was a bad mistake. The shoot finished at peak hour, making my trip home three hours. I recently started an Instagram account for all my unused film photographs, photos which are not being used in this project. 
The name Rocket comes from the photographer protagonist in the film City of God. 29th of the 8th, 2019. Last day of shoot included being sore and tired, but in good news we got everything we wanted done and more. I got to drive David's Mercedes to location. I spent a good 10 minutes looking for the handbrake. The actor for the film was a guy called Steven, somebody that gives me hope that not all crew slash cast relationships are awkward. This night I finished looking through all my high school books and getting all the little doodles, scribbles and graffitis. It was good to come to a conclusion to these books after two years. A part of me still wants to hold on to them, but I have no good reason. The longer I leave these vessels of useless information, the more irrelevant they come to my adult life. I got to rearrange my wardrobe, which has what my parents seem to think is a vast range of jumpers and tops, and what I see as not enough, but what I should see as a sufficient amount. 30th of the 8th, 2019. A common activity at this time of the year for people my age is traveling to Europe. Social media reinforces this theory, seeing constant photos of it. To Eliza's fortune and to my unfortune, she is going over for a month and a bit. Luckily, we found time to see each other before she left the country. I helped her with some final purchasing and packing. The whole day, I felt whipped and I'm not even tied down by her. Going to watch her get her eyebrows done, helping her try clothes on, holding her stuff, buying her coffee, the list went on. But I wouldn't want to do it for anybody else. This photo sees my last act as her boyfriend before we went our separate ways. I hope her trip is as good as her, implying I hope it's an incredible and beautiful trip. I couldn't let this day of sun go unfinished, so I met up with Sophie, where we had a cheeky look at some op shops in hopes to find a camcorder. Came out empty-handed. We went to her caravan, which looks like it's been renovated by people on the block, where we attempted to play Harry Potter cards, but got distracted by putting wax on our fingers and looking at her developed photos from throughout year 12 making me melancholy that it felt so long ago. 31st of the 8th, 2019. I went rush mode for pack up at work as I had to get to Phillip Island for a new wave and yuppie gig. I got out 20 minutes earlier than usual. I arrived at the Sam Remo Hotel in time to say good day to everybody. It felt like a crazy step for new wave to come out somewhere so far for a gig where we could pull in natural, new and genuine fans. It was joyous to finally see Jack in action, playing in his screamo band yuppie. Noises were coming out of his mouth I would have never imagined. They got the crowd hype and made an ordered chaos of a mosh. I decided to go ham in support and because of an urge. I head banged, got pushed around, went on shoulders and such. I am not one to do exercise and after putting in so much effort I ended up boffing and I had not even drank. As my head struggled to stay straight I drove some people back to Jack's dad's house where Kickons was located. I thought it wasn't a good idea to stay in apprehension of a bad sleep and an urge to drink, so I drove home. 1st of the 9th, 2019. I worked with a body hangover. It was hard to keep my head straight and there was immense pain trying to bend it. It was all worth it though. This date is Father's Day, the annual day of celebrating my dad with either a voucher or a new towel, changing my greetings to him from morning to happy Father's Day and probably having two more conversations with him than a usual day. What I struggle with when I have a father whose likes and dislikes are behind a mask of masking his likes and dislikes in order to mask his mask is finding a present. I automatically assume he won't really like what I give him, so it turns out being a day that isn't taken too seriously and his present is more of a joke. We had dinner with the whole family with pasta rose brought from Vic Market, followed by ice cream, which is an anomaly in this household. I sat down and watched the movie Young Offenders with Dad, something I haven't actually done with him for years, which did feel memorable. 2nd of the 9th, 2019. In the first time in months, this Monday night saw a different tale from the usual New Wave meeting. Instead, we did a shoot for the music video of Love Gal, which Rachel is directing. She wanted everybody to be included in this video, not just the musicians featured in the song, but also the people behind the cameras and computer screens. Booking our own studio for our own use felt like a growth in our group and felt professional. It was exciting and fun mucking around for the camera, especially as the camera was a red which Jack DM bought along. The camera is heavier than my house and can make anything look beautiful. Each part cost more than my livers in human exports. 3rd of the 9th, 2019. In the morn I head to the same studio to help Rachel on set shooting individual artist segments. Also to meet up with Tate so he could shoot. My next creative endeavour was directing a music video for Ryko's Retrograde. I wanted to shoot a time lapse using an early 2000s digital camera a camera which every photo gives off a melancholy vibe, amplified by the date stamp on the bottom corner. A consequence of using old technology is it's prone to fucking up, which it did today. We quickly travelled to a close cash converters to see if we could snag a new one. God said no. 
we attempted to rendezvous for lunch and after some miscommunication, we finally met to eat some chicken. Rachel and I vacated to Ligon Street, where we spur of the moment got a shisha with the kids' chips and skewer. We had to bounce early to get to the screening of Midsommar. Midsommar, directed by Ari Aster, is one of the most fucked up films I've seen, especially for a highly grossing, highly reviewed Hollywood film. The brutality definitely made the audience react how it wanted, and the absurd aspects made the crowd and I laugh when we didn't know what else to do. The cinematography, sound design, and soundtrack worked so well with creating this twisted, dreamlike film. 4th of the 9th, 2019. For the next coming Wednesdays, uni sees me weekly having a meeting with my editor and the director I'm editing for. I caught up with Steven to show him a rough cut of his film, noted criticisms and changes I could make. I completed an old music video I worked on for Ryko's Your Love song. Delphi and I got together at MC, made our way to Melbourne Museum, where we picked up no knowledge or information, but rather got a few laughs, some out of context photos, some nice photos, and looked at dead insects and beautiful gems, including Delphi. We went to the Curtain House rooftop bar for some dinner. Honey was on the radio, where she elegantly talked about herself and our crew. This was another crazy step for our group and her as an artist. 5th of the 9th, 2019. Doing nothing today but a half assed list. This list included the following. Edit green screen for Odyssey short film. Also experiment with editing. Start short film and feature film script. Plan future music videos. Clean car. Write for day. Try throw selfie. Context, Delphi. Do new edit of Devil's Day Off. I don't want to admit how little of this I got done. As I pondered what to take a photo of to encapsulate doing not a lot, I thought I would take a photo of my wardrobe door, which has my collection of Astor Theatre posters. I cannot justify why. Being in thought most of the day, my synapse is connected in such a way that I thought of this weird experiment I want to start doing. It involves acknowledging how I feel about seeing someone. If I am happy to see someone, I shall show it by how many times I salute them. One equals least, two equals in the middle, three equals most. Only people listening to this will pick up on it, and now they question what I've done to them in the past. 6th of the 9th, 2019. In good news, Neve got back from Hawaii, which called for seeing her. We united at hers, where I nearly drove on a newly done driveway. Off we went to go op shopping, specifically to find a camera. Unfortunately, I came out empty-handed once again. It was perfect weather for a milkshake, and when I mentioned the idea of the sweet cold beverage made from milk and ice cream, we couldn't shake it out of our heads until we got it. We got one at Imola Red Cafe in Rye. We got in a kerfuffle when we couldn't tell who had the vanilla milkshake and who had the caramel milkshake, as they both tasted identical. The bipolar weather kicked in and turned for the worse, going from sunny skies to downfall rain. I dropped off Neve where she had to climb through a fence to be able to get into her property. Seen in picture. 7th of the 9th, 2019. One of those nights where there is little to hold on to what was good about it. As I try to focus on the positive behind pictures taken and me as a personality, I try to look past the hassles and the drama. I would just say the travel to the city was not worth it. The night was redeemed through spending more time with Sophie and Marcus, creating a bonding experience and allowing Marcus to win some cash dollar at Crown. 8th of the 9th, 2019. Taking this Sunday to reflect on myself, thus an image of myself. Easy to say criticisms, but hard to say positives. Not that I don't see positives of myself, more so I feel full of myself saying them. I started writing a lot about myself, more than I've written for any other day. So, I will rather dwindle myself down to five positive and negative adjectives. Positives, funny, nice, cute, out there, and imaginative. Negatives, boastful, jealous, smartass, cynical, and tryhard. 9th of the 9th, 2019. Met up with David for a meeting discussing the edit for Junk. I spent the time in between that and New Wave meeting on my laptop watching YouTube videos, going to Michael's camera store to buy a new roller film, listening to music and buying $2.50 iced tea with Jack. New Wave meeting went for a while and saw the member Olivier leaving. It was mutual and peaceful, yet sad seeing someone who was there since the start part ways. Another day seeing me travel a lot on trains. I didn't get home till 1am. 10th of the 9th, 2019. Finally shot music video for Tate's Retrograde, and the camera actually worked this time. We went to Nick's work to shoot in a warehouse vibe, and also at a river slash drains plus a park. I knew it would depend a lot on editing to give a raw magazine vibe, so the shoot itself was fairly simple. I woke up feeling pretty sick, but I stuck it to the man. It was a fun day with a cameo of Nick and Rachel in my day. 11th of the 9th, 2019. Another meeting with David. Spent a good five hours editing for 
retrograde, which saw me doing a lot of monotonous stuff. I caught up with Neve, Kira, and Elise for a well-due meetup after too long. We did the usual of getting Chinese and some frozen yogurt. 12th of the 9th, 2019. Going into uni for sound class and spending another good few hours editing retrograde. Was just Jack and I in class with nobody else showing up. I spent a lot of time just staring at a computer screen. I headed home and finished the music video. It got Raiko's approval as he said he wants to kiss me. Today was the day one of my favourite artists, Daniel Johnston, passed away. Here is a photo of one of his earliest works, Songs of Pain, on tape. Rest in peace. 13th of the 9th, 2019. Woke up feeling better but left with a bad cough. Picked up Suede, where she accompanied me getting film developed. We had lunch at Mornington, where we got warmth from a heater. I felt like a changed man getting a healthy smoothie rather than a coffee and actually finishing majority of my food. Recently, day where I spend socialising, I get home feeling unaccomplished, but today I felt gratification through Suede and I and our great conversation. 14th of the 9th, 2019. In common practice for this Saturday night, I travel to the city. This night was for another new wave gig, which when I take a step back, I have to appreciate the amount of shows we are getting and the amount of effort the rappers go to every weekend. I went out with my mate Jay. I wanted to introduce him to everybody. He has a predilection to that music, so I wanted to hear his opinions. It was at Horse Bazaar, which is a venue in a city. It was for the Get Down event, which is a reoccurring show that, quote, showcases Melbourne's precious hip hop, trap, rap, soul, and R&B artists. It was primarily Honey Set, but she got the other New Wave artists to get up. This night saw New Wave playing a few unreleased tracks. Another artist that played was Fungi, who after starting the chant, who wants the juice, and the crowd responding with, I want the juice, he pulled out juice boxes and threw them into the crowd. Jay gave the tick of approval with his usual apathetic tone. After the show, we watched 2019 Harmony come into practice when a group of elderly white women were charmed by a group of Sudanese Australians to get in a group photo. We also watched everybody contribute to helping a truck drive a reverse into a road, blocking many cars and taking a good five minutes. In this photo, Aaron has his early 2000s digital camera, a camera which relinquishes the pleasant remembrance of low quality photos with a timestamp on the bottom corner. 15th of the 9th, 2019. Just one of those Sundays, you know? My fourth year and my 195th week being at Seclunas. I always question why I'm not more sick of it to the point of wanting to leave because of its repetition. I find most other things in my life repetitive to the point of genuinely disliking them and craving a new environment, example my house and the peninsula. But yet for some reason, I endure coming into the same fruit shop with the same fruit and vegetables, the same small space to the same exact things, yet I am not mentally sick of it. After being here for so long, you'd assume I know most of the stock and produce, but think again, because I struggle to remember some things, mainly the dumb cunt herbs. One thing I will not necessarily miss, but will be sad to think I'll completely disregard and forget about is those local customers that always come in and have a good chat. This one woman that comes in who I see most weekends always comments on my hair. She wants to ask me if I surf, presumably because of the hair. And whenever I'm asked that question, I just say yes because I can't endure the embarrassment of admitting that even though I live on the beach and have blonde hair, I can't surf, let alone swim, because I never learned as a kid, because I was a pussy. Now she always asks me about the surf and asks if I went down that morning. I've been continuing that life for years. Her nicety and ability to hold a good conversation, I will miss. 16th of the 9th, 2019. The most meaningful part of today was cleaning my car, which goes to show how meaningless this day was. It's something I rarely do, but my car started to smell weird and look rusty, so I took action. I didn't go to New Wave meeting as I have an early start tomorrow, and I want more than five hours sleep. As I find myself deep into 2019, I have little motivation to be constantly writing for this. I feel what I'm doing is getting uninteresting and a bit all the same. I rarely actually write on the day, and this feels more like a chore than anything. 17th of the 9th, 2019. This Tuesday morning, I had to drive to Buttfuck Nowhere, Victoria, also known as Acheron, for my last uni shoot. It was nearly a three hour drive. I stayed sane through my music and the nice changes in views to the peninsula. The roles this time around included myself being first assistant director, which entails holding the slate and writing the log sheets. Eddie Skerritt being the director, Jack Montgomery being cinematographer, David Alagna being gaffer, and Stephen being sound. Unfortunately, David could not make it. I arrived to Eddie's grandparents' farmhouse. I thoroughly liked the house with that aura of old bricks, old furniture, an astounding view of the hills, and peace and quiet. They own a lot of land, which we will no doubt venture. 
Eddie's story is about two teenagers who end up in fantasy slash medieval world confused. Spoiler warning, they are just tripping on LSD. The actors included Connor Cochran, who I have met before through Nick and his group of friends, which I was glad he was tagging along as he is genuinely a good bloke. Eddie Sings as one of the actors bailed last minute and one of Eddie's mates, Joel. The first of our troubles began as we had to maneuver through manure, sticks and trees. In today's scene, we had to shoot the prince walking around with horses. Eddie's mum was on set to be a horse wrangler and to teach Joel how to handle them. Comically, the horse kept walking in circles whilst filming. For dinner, we had a barbecue accompanied with beers. 18th of the 9th, 2019. Our second day of shooting saw us walking down to a hill which we had to repeatedly walk down and up. It was a short and sweet day of filming. Eddie showed us the river which was flowing at a deadly speed and a mud house his grandpa made. We went to the local town of Acheron to buy supplies, mainly more beers. We all had a wavelength thought of how suicidal we would all be if we lived in such an isolated town like this. Tonight saw me releasing the retrograde music video on New Wave. We dug into homemade spaghetti after having sat down on a broken tree where we all sunk piss in a how's the serenity moment. Intermission of a shitty American college comedy film we had a bonfire. 19th of the 9th, 2019. Like all our other shoots, we realized that we could possibly finish a day early, so we attempted to smash it out today. Today was not fun as I had to act as the villain whose name is the villain. I was holding the princess hostage who was just a sex doll. The location was very muddy and very against OH&S. My shoes and clothes got absolutely cemented by the mud. It made me glad I got to go back home early. What I was going to miss though, was hanging with Connor. Not only sick cunt for having his name spelt right, but also for being entertaining, funny, and so easy to get along with, that he could probably be friend Adolf Hitler. 20th of the 9th, 2019. With the recent announcement that my longtime friend Alana Kutz got accepted into the Navy and was heading off soon, I had to catch up with her before she left for months. Of no contact with her. Alana and I were inseparable in early high school. There was one summer where we caught up practically every day. The older we get, the more we drifted away from each other, albeit physical rather than mentally, because we didn't catch up as often, but when we did, it was like nothing changed. Alana was one of my first crushes. We have so many memories that I'm always reminded of when I go through old photos and videos. I always remember hanging around Rai, getting chips and gravy and endlessly laughing. I shared a lot of the same opinions as her with our hate for the same people, topics that we found funny, the way we would overthink things, and how neither of us could swim. I luckily found a time that suited her this day to hang out. We had a long list of places we could go for lunch, so we used a randomizer which chose the Red Cafe in Rye. I met her there with Suede, where we obliterated pancakes whilst, whilst discussing every little detail of the Navy. It always makes me happy to see somebody know what they want to do with themselves, and to actually undertake it. I asked if she had improved swimming as we both suck. We all had an arm wrestling competition to see who's the strongest these days. We said our goodbyes and that was that. It's good that we rarely see each other these days because now that she is gone, it won't feel too different. 21st of the 9th, 2019. Similar to last year's practice of this project, September in 2018, where I undertook taking photos and narrating the days of September, my parents left to travel overseas, which they are now undertaking again. I'm happy for them now that they've hit a point in their life taking on the world and feel comfortable leaving their children. Their destination is New Zealand, which at first hearing I thought was boring, but then I realised the beauty of New Zealand holds. So I appreciated their choice. I've been anticipating their departure ever since they told me about it, which sounds hostile, but I have needed white girl alone time and I can finally have it. Their travel is a lot shorter this time around, so there was no tears following our goodbyes. This time last year, I was at Tate's for his birthday party, where I became a lot closer with the Bayside crew. A whole year later, and a lot of these people feel like family. When I say family, that includes not only the love, but also the challenging characteristics, including arguments and such. But like a family, we get over those things and grow. It goes to show how strong our relationships are. This time around, we went to Tate's for his album listening launch party, which he set on his birthday. He went all out buying lights, speakers, and microphones. His album titled, We Are Not The Same, was something so raw and powerful. It made me envy his ability to put his thoughts into something so imaginatively creative and artistically articulate. Everybody played close attention to the songs while Raiko sung over it, giving a special depth to it. Afterwards, everybody partied with a couple of people free freestyling. 22nd of the 9th, 2019. Second night with my parents away and I already got Jolly Oli to come around. More so for work than play as we had a few last things to book for Japan. 
We booked all the activities that we needed the pre-buy tickets for and we bought our Japan Railway Pass, allowing us to use their public transport system. We planned a lot of our days thoroughly. It was appealing to see everything come together, but off-putting seeing all our money disappear. Quintessential to Joel and I hanging out, we set up two TVs to play the Modern Warfare beta, whilst my internet was trying to fuck us. Something I fully appreciated tonight was Joel as a human being. It's rare you find somebody who ticks all the boxes of a good friend and balances all of them perfectly. We talk a good amount, but don't go overboard annoying each other or boring one another. His humour blends being mean as the punchline with the perfect amount of making jokes of topical things. We enjoy the perfect amount of some entertainment whilst disagreeing with a lot allowing our conversations to stay interesting. He has the perfect amount of selflessness where it does get to the point of being weird. We both find each other funny and so on. 23rd of the 9th, 2019. With uni slowing down, I have more free time where I juggle my priorities and always end up believing working is more important, especially as I need to save for Japan. So I agreed to working this Monday. The only thing that made this shift different was staff being confused I was working and the store being extremely quiet. With my parents away, I have now set up my PS4 on the big screen in the lounge room. I began a new game, which is something I haven't done in too long as I can never find the time. It is Yakuza Zero. I also now need to fend for myself in terms of dinner, so I headed to my local supermarket, Richie's, where I told myself I would buy some healthy foods to make a healthy meal, but I resorted to buying chicken strips. 24th of the 9th, 2019. My day began when I drove to pick up Nick and then to pick up Tate. From there, we went to Rachel's, then from Rachel's, we picked up Tom. We decided last second to shoot a music video for Ryko. So we headed to the hills of Lilydale, where four directors put our minds into shooting random shots. It was more of a time killer than anything, but it was still fun to drive around in the soothing roads that reminded us of Canada. Our actual plan for the day was to feature on Culture Sounds podcast. After picking up a few things at Rachel's, her mum giving us banana bread and heading to a fast food joint, we went to the man's property where we entered a crazy room that was set up for the podcast. His setup was unreal, including a big round table, instruments everywhere, camera setups, lights, reflectors, a studio, a perfect amount of microphones, plenty of water, and just enough seats. I sat at the back of everyone. My main reasoning was that I was nervous and wanted to keep the attention away from me. When I look at the possibility of the group being popular, I want to be more behind the scenes, as I'm not too sure yet, in this time, how I want to portray myself to a wide audience. Our conversation traversed the topics of each member, the beginnings of New Wave, our inspirations and the music culture in Melbourne. We ended up chatting for a good two hours. My speech input totaled to probably around four sentences. Most of the time I was just listening to what everybody else had to say. It was a surreal experience and yet another big transition for New Wave into the reality of blowing up. 25th of the 9th, 2019. Finally, Jack Paul and I found a day to hang out with one another, something we haven't done since 2018. Our plan for the day was to meet up with our film cameras and do some photography. It's funny how breakthroughs in our lives always align. We have both hit a point where photography is now more enjoyable and interesting endeavor than filmmaking. And we both have a fascination for 35 millimeter photography. It was something special to dedicate a day to finding locations and subjects to take photos of whilst discussing the philosophy of photography. We started in Blairgarry, trekking around back streets where we stumbled across a small cottage slash room slash bungalow, which could only be described as creepy as it felt very misplaced and ancient. It was hidden amongst bush and after pushing the door down we entered the confines of a vintage den. Indoors was a 1960s small box TV, a record player underneath a dust soaked bed, golf clubs and exercise bike. We continued on, driving through right back streets having no luck in finding any material there. Our next location was an oddly placed, rustic and graffiti ridden half pipe in Tukaruk. We progressed to Rosebud Wreckers. They didn't let us in because we didn't have hard hats and high vis, told from the guy who didn't have a hard hat or high vis. Proceeding to Borneo, we ventured the tall tree slash empty farm rages, sneaking into somebody's property where we found a car diseased with dirt a bright yellow slash rustic loader, some sheep and a demolished car. We went our separate ways, hoping that the separation won't last long. I try to put my finger on why I enjoy photography and it's something to do with the anticipation of what the photo will look like mixed with something else, which as of writing, I cannot describe as I cannot conjure the thought of what it is. 26th of the 9th, 2019. Following the events of heading to uni and doing nothing worthy of manifesting into words, except for getting super irked over a dumbass program coming up whilst trying to edit, I researched how I could kill time before I had to head to a gig in the city. I found out Rachel was house-sitting her uncle's house, which to my delightment wasn't too far away. I got a train pronto and headed there. 
Upon arrival, I saw Nick and Rachel going over Rachel's edit of the latest music video she is directing for the song Love Gal. We had some chilled back gangster sheet 122 bonding time. The dog in which she was taken care of disliked me and ran away whenever I got close. I thought this was very blunt and impolite. This dog and I had a rough relationship. It always stared at me and I tried my hardest to befriend it. Upon reviewing these events, I fucking hate that dog. I told them my plans and we decided to head to the gig together. We walked the dumb cunt dog, allowed time to get ready and had some hot chips before we split. The event was for the Grogans, which is a Bayside band, but we did not spend $70 for them. We were there to see the pre-act, the ballet lip bombs. On the bulletin of Chipper's Love Life, he got a girlfriend who was the lead singer and guitarist in the band, so we went to support her. I met Chipper where he introduced me to Maisie Everett, a person with an immense aura of coolness and laid-backness. Their set was very groovy and I was enticed to the point of non-stop head bobbing. This picture is her jamming out. 27th of the 9th, 2019. This Friday was also an unprecedented day of working. This shift took up my whole day. I went home to finish Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered campaign. Finishing a game is something I haven't done in over a year. Video games still play a big part of my life as I stay updated with new releases, but I never get around to actually playing them. I think I enjoy the anticipation rather than the games themselves. I ended up cooking the healthy food I bought the other day. I attempted to make a cannelloni, but I could not find a recipe that resembled the ingredients I had, so I just winged it. I'll admit, I did call Rose for some assistance. It turned out surprisingly edible. 28th of the 9th, 2019. Marrying last year, as my parents are away, I decided to have people come around to mine for grand final day. I invited around 20 people, including my main high school group of friends and Nick and Rachel. I waited around for everybody playing Modern Warfare 1. My first guests were Tyler and Marcus. Their ammunition included a slab of beer, Hennessy, and some vodka. The next guests were Chipper and Maisie, accompanied with a long neck of Melbourne Bitter. And so we chucked on the pre-footy show. Neve showed up with her cruisers and double blacks. Next to arrive was Lockie, Minnie, and Kalani with a care package of an esky full of beer. We all sat around in the lounge room. I transformed the kitchen table into a ping pong table, which I knew would eventually turn into beer pong. I sloppily attempted to make pancakes and started to drink, attempting to pace myself. Who came next, I cannot remember in order, but the faces included Ben James, who after a night out was coming down to mine to come down, Stefan with the usual gift of a strange vodka, Kelsey Fern, Suede and Ingrid, Jesse and Annabelle, and Delphi, with their usual blends of vodka. We all got progressively drunk as the ship footy match played in the background. Richmond demolished Gold Coast, so there was no point paying much attention. The rest of the day was a bit of a mess, and all I conjure memory of was our loud attempt to playing a drinking game. Fraser Spencer graced us with his presence, Tyler breaking the toilet roll, roll holder, the dinner table leg breaking, and going down the beach with Richo and Stefan. When Rachel and Nick arrived, we disappointingly went to Salt, where we tipped our intoxication over the edge, changing our sexualities and dancing and singing to the poor man playing guitar. 29th of the 9th, 2019. I became conscious with an obvious hangover on this day. Not much else to say other than that nauseous feeling and that down feeling. Getting home, I went straight to bed. In continuation of talking to my older self, I now arrive at the age of 49. Being in your 40s, I view as nothing special. It feels like it would be the exact same as your 30s. One year off being 50, where old age now becomes a prominent thought. By this age, I hope you're succeeding at the job you're undertaking. I hope you're not using the excuse of a busy schedule to not stay fit. This is where it really matters. If I was to have a goal of what you've been doing in your 40s, I hope it's that you're still living adventurous. I pray that even if you're settled down with family and kids, I hope your day-to-day -day life hasn't settled down. I hope each day is new and exciting. Do you still keep in constant contact with mum, dad and Rose? I know Rose already has a kid by now, that's for sure. Do you act like an uncle to he slash she? Or do you find them annoying? What's Rose's husband like? Hope he's more interesting than the current boyfriend she has in 2019. Do you have any pets or is your dumbass still allergic to them? Has climate change killed you yet? 30th of the 9th, 2019. I did adult responsibilities this Monday. I finally took action after getting sick after most meals by going to the doctors to see what's up. I did a blood and wee test. I sent off the prehistoric method of communication, mail. I had to buy a few groceries and presents. I accompanied Rose to lunch at Smashing Bean where I smashed a ham and cheese croissant, something that definitely activates my sickness. But as I eat, I do not regret a thing. Off I went to the city for New Wave meeting. The reason I went to the doctors is because after most meals and foods, I feel sick. 
nauseous, but never to the point of actually vomiting. I also burp a copious amount. I used to shrug it off as eating too much or just being small. 1st of the 10th, 2019. After months of having a roll of Super 8 ready to shoot with, after using New Wave's money to purchase, I finally got to use it. My plan was to shoot a music video for the song 13, played by the New Wave band Hokusai. I got together with the lead singer Honey and our assistants, Nick, Maddie, and Luth. We rendezvoused at Flinders, where we went to a lookout at one of the cliff faces slash beaches. The tone of the music video was surrealism mixed with aestheticism. Shots included apple, roses, and Polaroids floating next to Honey, her watering the ground to get flowers to grow so she can do loves me, loves me not. We attempted to have a shot of roses on fire, but it was a failure, caused by wind and light. Proceeding the shots on the desolate cliff top, we went to a hidden beach with rocks instead of sand. After getting everything I wanted, we snacked on fish and chips. I now have to send off the roller Super 8, waiting approximately a few weeks before I can get the processed footage back. 2nd of the 10th, 2019. I committed myself to completing more of the edit for junk, so this followed me staring at a computer screen for a few hours. It solidified my opinion that I do not want to be an editor as a job. It is tedious and irritable. An additional task I committed myself to was cleaning the house. One of those things I have very little motivation to do and worried that it may become a problem once moved out. I let things get mouldy and unfathomably dirty, but what redeems this drawback is that once I'm in the mood to clean, I fucking clean. I spent two hours straight cleaning the dirty floors, throwing out rubbish, vacuuming, wiping down stuff, and cleaning dishes. My last task for the day was heading to Holly's for a new wave meeting. I met Max Fly, who everybody meets at the music meetings as he is a producer. A cool, swift American dude who has produced some banging beats and has helped produce and mix our up and coming EP. We debated the title, album cover, and promotion of the EP, getting tips from Uncle Fly. 3rd of the 10th, 2019. Today marked a noticeable transition into warmer weather. I sweated my way to uni and felt it whilst editing. David and I claimed an editing suite where we continued the progress of our edits. I misplanned the right time to leave uni so I encountered peak hour on trains and then peak hours on the road. What got me through this long ass trip was the anticipation of going to the drive-ins with Neve. We arranged to see the new horror film Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, directed by Andre Overadal. I hadn't seen a new release at the drive-ins before and quote Neve, it's a vibe, to see it at one. In review, it was a turd, unscary, dull, poorly filmed and same old generic horror film. The only compensating qualities were the monsters and death scenes. I went in expecting an egg of a horror film, as I always do with that genre, and that's exactly what I got. It was worthwhile going to take the piss out of it and eating our KFC together. 4th of the 10th, 2019. I had a big day ahead of me with a full day and night hanging with the crew before our gig at Revs. Upon hearing the news that we were playing at Revs, I was dumbfounded as I thought it was purely a venue for DJs and I also assumed it was a dingy little cave that people on Googs just imagined was a venue. I pulled up to Chapel Street where I gathered with everyone. A recent revelation is one of our meetings is that we need to spice up our live shows. A way we discovered was to be colour coordinated and to have accessories. Our experiment for tonight was to wear white on white on white and to have white face masks. We got a couple of group shots and individual portraits. From there we got some munchies at a kebab shop snacking on the likes of HSP, pizza and kebabs. After refueling, we killed some time at Vintage Bazaar, tempting ourselves with possible purchases and getting frightened by the eerie presence. On we went to the venue to do sound check, to play an infuriating game of the Rolling Stones pinball and to gulp some beers. We met up with the photographer, Moe Altum, who captured our antics. We walked around chapel, getting photos, convincing strangers to come, randoms giving us umbrellas to improve our group photo and so forth. We performed at what was probably one of our best shows to date. The artist played perfectly, Nick DJed, the sound was just right, and the crowd was very energised and there was a lot of people. 5th of the 10th, 2019. With Swade's birthday being during the week, she planned a little do at her new house. One of those little gatherings with purely close friends. It was enjoyable to spend a night with my predominant friend group from high school. I visited a couple of hours late thanks to work. Luckily, I made with time to scavenge food from the platter. I slammed pretzels, blueberries, red licorice, mango, biscuit and dip, olives, salami, cheese, chocolate, strawberries, wafers, and mini cucumbers. We sat around a fire as we watched Lockie fall off the deck on an egg chair. Majority of the end of the night saw us lighting our farts on fire. 
Uh, 6th of the 10th, 2019. The night before, I asked the fellas if they wanted to come see Joker, directed by Todd Phillips. That then became the objective of a Sunday night. We went to Rosebud Cinemas where we stumbled into Sam and Brayden. Sitting down, Sam noticed a man seated by himself with a bag, implementing the thought into my mind that this will be one of those rare occasions of a shooting in Australia. My judgement of the Joker included utterly enjoying it. I thought it was surprisingly slow for a film that was well praised by the public. Yaquan is currently my favourite actor at the moment, and his acting in this strengthened that opinion. I went in not expecting any connections to the Batman universe, but it had a few smart nods which I appreciated. The colour grading was very hit or miss, sometimes looking beautiful and sometimes looking dull. The soundtrack was unreal, which is one of those main things I look for in a film. Afterwards, we chatted in the arcade. We watched the Time Crisis trailer laughing at the obscurity of the characters' names. 7th of the 10th, 2019. This morning, I killed time doing odd jobs around the house. Nothing memorable and nothing that I'll be able to call back into my mind in 38 years. Something noticeable and memorable which I saw on my way to New Wave meeting was a climate change protest. As you can probably tell through my lack of verbalising, I am not a committed environmentalist slash activist and do not indulge in the political scene. This isn't a principle of mine, it's just a result of focusing too much on other things. It's crazy to think that climate change is very relevant in my lifetime, yet I treat it like it's irrelevant. I'm not even going to try and redeem myself by saying that some things I do are more environmentally aware than others because that would shit on the people that are actually doing major things to help humanity. I take a back seat and I'm part of the problem that will lead to the death of the earth. The protest is part of many that have been occurring over the past weeks to promote political action. It's been happening around the world. It's added a couple of minutes onto my travel time, but fuck if I'm going to think it's a bad thing and fuck the people that complain about it. The inconvenience we can feel is so minuscule in comparison to the problems in which people are trying to solve. On a brighter note, literally, daylight savings has added a couple of hours of sunshine to the day. We got to have our meeting outside. On the train home, a drunken man conversed with me. Surprisingly, it wasn't annoying. We had a chat about his ho home country, Zimbabwe, and moving to Australia, his dislike yet appreciation for his job, having a few beers after a long meeting, and his wife awaiting his arrival. 8th of the 10th, 2019. I awoke to straight away watch the first episode of the fourth and last season of Mr. Robot, arguably one of my favourite shows, with its culmination of beautiful cinematography, booming soundtracks, mind-bending storylines, and many satisfying twists and turns. With the internet being down, I had to use my data to download it. I continued the day by finalising sound design for Junk and doing some graphic design for New Wave's first EP. Suede came around where I got to properly say happy birthday, one-on-one. -on -one. We caught up with Abby Evans and the Sophie Williams, allowing me to be with the holy trinity of women in my life. Suede being the father, Sophie being the son, and Abby being the holy spirit, thus creating I, the content and fulfilled man I am. We sat in the back of Sophie's car, opposing our fast by eating Chinese. We immaturely played fuck, marry or avoid, and maturely discussed how we can improve being friends for one another. A lasting memory will be of being in that car, talking as the sun slowly vanished, the rain progressing its intensity on the roof as we all cosily crammed in the confines of a car. That ambience and mood. 9th of the 10th, 2019. With no uni on for the day, well it was on but wasn't necessary, I still travelled to the city to mingle with Delphine. We arranged to go to Science Works for the nostalgia and following our trend of visiting Melbourne's exhibits. We got a train to the industrial area of the city, entering the hum humble abode of science. I got to experience the interactive exhibits with an older lens, ranging from trying to outrun Kathy Freeman, she's slow as shit, being a goalkeeper, getting your ball stolen from a little shit, demolishing simulated disabled people in wheelchair racing, skeletons hanging from the roof, to weighing and measuring ourselves. What was new and unexpected was an upstairs section, catered for your Instagram, with galaxies you could push in, married roofs with projected visuals, married rooms, scene and image, controllable, fans blowing beanbag beans, and so forth. Though the recommended age for science works is definitely under 19, and the main crowd being kids, we still had a surprisingly fun time. Reliving a fraction of excitement that came in our youth and exploring it with Delphi made me take a refreshing step back from my adulthood. We got dinner at Yarra River restaurant overlooking the water and city. 10th of the 10th, 2019. With the internet not working at home and demanding downloads from the internet, I en route to uni so I could stinge their internet to download the sound effects I needed to polish junk. I killed two birds with one stone by heading past Peninsula Camera Centre and dropping off three rolls of film to get developed. 
One roll of film included the photos for these days. I also had a roll used in the point and shoot Luke gave me to experiment with photography. I also had a shitty disposable camera from nearly over a year ago. It showed the nostalgia of Neve's fringe. As I am rarely using trains as transport these days, I found little time to sit down and continue reading my books, so it took a prolonged time since my last book to finish The Secret Agent by Joseph Conrad. Coincidentally, the book I read earlier in the year, Heart of Darkness, is the same author, which I only just noticed. I had owned this book for over a year, but couldn't finish it. After giving it a second chance, my thoughts drifted to disliking it. It's hard not to automatically shit on this book for being composed unnecessarily convoluted. I felt dumb not understanding the flow and I thought I was misinterpreting a lot of the story, but after finishing it and reading a detailed synopsis, I was actually on the mark with my assumptions. The story overall was fairly dull and the characters uninteresting. A lot of the humour was hard to understand with the mindset of a 90s kid, but I could still appreciate some of the wit. It inspired me with its original way of explaining some things. The story definitely picked up near the end, having the vibes of a Coen Brothers film. 11th of the 10th, 2019. With a 6.30am wake up to help at work, I thought my day would end short once getting home, but I ended up catching up this way to have a run of the mill day in sorrow. I came into work to help unload all the delivery fruit and veg and put in the fridge. Both feeling hungry, Swade and I went to a local cafe. Strange to think, but after having living here for 19 years, neither of us had been into it before. I indulged in an iced coffee, the first time in over three weeks having caffeine, after having the theory it was messing with my heart. We went to the back beach, where we could freely walk across the rock pools before the influx of Turo's in summer. We challenged ourselves by walking on tiny surfaces, avoiding water. Captured is a view of the rock pools. We took a detour to Mubbel to purchase ice cream, then moved to the front beach, facetiming Sophie at work. 12th of the 10th, 2019. No plans for this Saturday night, so I went home to stare at my computer screen. My favourite TV show is Breaking Bad, having watched it four times over. Yesterday, a movie sequel to it came out. Al Camino, so I got to luxuriate myself in the universe one more time. Captured is the title credits. In quick review recap, felt unnecessary, characters looked distractingly older, soundtrack was good but could have included more, some shots were unreal, some of it felt tacky. I also started the book Kingdom of Fear written by Hunter S. Thompson. 13th of the 10th 2019, these are some of the misadventures from the people I heard today at work. A crack whore trying to get them back on the pipe. The extremely racist antics of their friend's new girlfriend. The confidence boost of having an older woman getting with them before even having a conversation. And a granddaughter biting her lip and needing surgery. Hearing these stories, I wonder what stories behold my future. I wonder at the age of 59 what prominent story I will tell the uninterested younger grandkids. I research the common events and changes that happen in your 50s. Skin begins to wrinkle, eyesight gets worse, stomach problems, achy joints, signs of heart disease, more susceptible to getting sick and memory loss. If these things don't make you want to kill yourself before the age of 59, I don't know what does. If you haven't killed yourself by this point yet, 59 year old Connor, O'Leary, I shall ask you a few questions. What do you fear most of these things? 19 year old me fears memory loss the most. If memory is poor, I'm sure you're clinging onto this documentary. Are you happy with how you've raised your kids? At the moment, I lean more to the side of nature over nurture, seeing people that have adequate parents still turn out for the worst. I worry that even though you may have put in lots of efforts, they still might be little turds. This is all implying you've had a kid. If you haven't had a kid, are you regretting it? You're a bit too old to have a kid now, aren't you? Who's going to take care of your aging and dying body? At least, if you haven't had a kid, you've had a freer, cheaper, less constricted and funner adult life. How's your wife or husband? Going. If you're still a bachelor, I'm surprised you've lasted this long and haven't caved in. How's your career going? Have you had a midlife crisis? Sporadically get a tattoo? New car? No, you're probably a pussy at 59. Surely you've got your own house by now. I take that back. If the housing market keeps going the way it is, there's no chance you can afford one. If you do have a house, I wonder what you have done to make it your own. You've probably added a few quirks, but I feel like you're no longer expressive. If you haven't made a feature film yet, fuck you. Quit your current job and do what you've always dreamed of accomplishing. I'm at an age of ignorance where I think you can still do that. 14th of the 10th, 2019. This morning I lay in the sun. I nourish in the beauty of this moment, laying down next to Alvis whilst the rays from the sun warm my body to a pleasurable temperature. I become self-aware of this moment, in a way I'm trying to slow down time and to stop letting life pass. It's like breathing, 
Once you're aware, you can't focus on anything else and you try and control it. Pictured is our new way of meeting at a new location. Perfect as it has a professional vibe and is quiet. On my way home, I got lost in somber thought, specifically in how I view myself as a creative. It's a curse to want to be an original creative because in 2019, it's near impossible to make something new and innovative. A lot of the personal things I want to create, I can't strive in because of my voice. I think my voice is objectively annoying. 15th of the 10th, 2019. In frame is Noah in his studio. This day we worked on the soundtrack for Junk. It was exciting to sit down as a director and walk through the film with a talented musician and sound artist. We talked about the sound design that could be polished and we broke down what scenes needed music. For the first scene, we created this ambience backtrack with notes that reflected the mindsets of the characters. The last scene, we created a tense buildup that led to a chaotic end. I appreciate Noel's immense help with this film, from acting and creating the soundtrack. Once again, I got lost in somber thought whilst writing this. I realised I'm losing track of my original plan for this project. I feel like I've been over explaining my days. I've been more doing a diary. I don't even really point out the image and explain it. I think I might just be overthinking this. 16th of the 10th, 2019. The randomizer app chose Mornington as Neve and I's destination for lunch. We dined in the pinnacle of unhealthy, eating pancakes, chips and nuggets, and having milkshakes and coffees. Whilst we asked the deep and powerful questions, where do nuts come from? Do birds get warts? What do blind people see? After Google enlightened us, we dabbled in op shopping and printing photos. Nick and I went for dinner in what seemed like a scene from a movie, seated in an empty Asian restaurant, serviettes tucked by the waiter, and buying unwanted items to get over the minimum. It was a comedy scene. We experienced a fried ice cream. 17th of the 10th, 2019. I finally finished junk, so I can now stop mentioning it. It's a project I think I'm finally proud of. There's still a few nuances I'm unhappy with, but they're out of my control. Five hours of this day was dedicated to travel time and only an hour and a half was dedicated to uni. To keep myself sane, I spoilt myself with purchasing a CD, finalizing my Quentin Tarantino CD soundtrack collection, ignoring Kill Bill Volume 2, with the latest Once Upon a Time in Hollywood soundtrack. 18th of the 10th, 2019. With work Friday mornings being a recurring theme, I got home and had a nanny nap. Today's day was just a day of sleeping whilst it was daytime. Awakening, feeling even more tired and shit, I polished off the book Kingdom of Fear by Hunter S. Thompson. A book that follows the journalist's articles from newspapers in his later life. They can be hit or miss. Some are hilarious while some are too political and while others try to be too out there. 19th of the 10th, 2019. An eight and a half hour shift at work. I went for a jog tonight. I went at night so I wouldn't see anyone. What motivated me was the possibility of living a longer life the healthier I am. I also just feel like an unfit cunt, proved by how long it took for me to recover. This image is of the view at where I ran to. I came home to watch rugby with dad. A surreal and confusing experience. The players are absolute BEAST! 20th of the 10th, 2019. Just another one of those Sundays working and a night spent in. 21st of the 10th, 2019. With news of the new wave meeting being cancelled, I instead went to Jack Montgomery's on Chapel. Casey, Jack and I went to a Mexican restaurant, having $10 margaritas. Strong margaritas, mind you, with salt and chili flakes sprinkled on the edges. Getting denied the kids' nachos, I ordered the normal nachos where I ate the amount of the kids' nachos. We went to the beloved Astor Theatre, in frame, where we saw a double feature of The Thing, 1982, directed by John Carpenter, and An American Werewolf in London, 1981, directed by John Landis. Both classic horror films with a touch of absurdity. 22nd of the 10th, 2019. Leaving Jack's, I spent the day by myself walking up down Chapel Street. I planned to buy a couple of necessities, but Chapel is deadly for my bank account because of its record stores, bookstores, and vintage stores. Here is an image of a tram that helped me get me and my recently purchased The Fifth Dimension record and Igor CD home. I began reading High Fidelity, author Nick Hornby. 23rd of the 10th, 2019. Fate attempted to stop me from seeing my cousin Kyle O'Leary this day. With my train stopping and buses replacing them on a hot day, I was crammed in a sweat fetish wet dream. I got off and ordered an Uber, which was 20 minutes late. In the Uber, the train I was going to get said there was none scheduled, which turned out to be fault in the app. I eventually got to uni late to have a quick meeting. I bailed to meet with Kyle, where I could down my past sorrows with a beer and a good chat. We sat in at an Asian restaurant where we got to bring each other back to speed with one another's lives. 
Hanging with Kyle is something I haven't done in close to two years. A very unreasonable amount. We struggle to find time being so separated by distance and schedule alignments. Every time I meet with him, I forget how similar we are, excluding height, facial hair, and voice intensity. Coincidentally, we have both been having gut problems. It must run in our poor genes. We adventured to a rooftop, seen an image where we continued stories of shenanigans we've been up to, our love lives, our current entertainment consumption, and so on following family prattle. We parted ways as I had to head to Holly's for a meeting and I already felt solemn with our departure. My urge increased to want to see him more often. 24th of the 10th, 2019. This Thursday saw me covering a shift at Seclunas. I got to close with Bill and Slav. I only recently met Bill even though he has been working here for some time. I had a lot of anticipation meeting him as there was a general consensus amongst the staff that he is a top bloke. Upon meeting him, I instantly recognized why he was worshipped with honest friendliness. He has a personality I aspire to have the more I blossom. Slav gives the most sincere and happiest hellos to everyone and loves a good swear word. 25th of the 10th, 2019. The boys and I caught up this Friday night to sing some beers, something we haven't done in donkey's years. We begun at Lockie's, sitting around the fire and sipping the beauty of beer. Chiba, Lockie, Mini, Kalani, Jared, Robbo, and I headed to the local pizza joint, which turns out has $3 pots. Glover almost getting himself kicked out. We went back to Lockie's to sink Chipper's newly discovered beer, Ton. $30 for 30 cans. We had a few rounds of sparring. 26th of the 10th, 2019. My intention for after work was to pick up my car, have a quick nap, then meet up with Sophie and the lasses at Salt. Even though I felt extremely tired, this project has motivated me to leave no day dull. Turns out I set my alarm for 8.30 a.m., not p.m., so I slept till 10 p.m., giving me no time to go out. So just like that, I did nothing for my Saturday. Though I have that push, it also makes me feel more shit when I don't do anything. 27th of the 10th, 2019. In terms of this project, Sundays are starting to send me insane. I can't conjure any ideas of original and unrepetitive photos and things to talk about. There's only so much you can dissect that's worthy of illustrating for the viewer. I might start allocating Sundays to a different structure to this project. Instead of talking about the day, I will ask a philosophical question and answer it. That is unless something noteworthy happens on a Sunday. The question for today, would you live forever if you had the choice? Yes, even though it would be mental torture seeing everybody you've ever loved die and everything you've loved destroyed, including your family, friends, planet, earth, and even the universe. You would surpass these thoughts and lose these memories I also believe because you'll live through the end of the universe and live in a torturous and incomprehensible amount of time in nothingness, my mind will become so intelligent and provoking that I will be the sole reason for the new Big Bang. 28th of the 10th, 2019. With New Wave meeting continuing this week, I had an idea for a photo shoot I could work on. With my film camera, I wanted mid-scream slash shout portraits. With them, I want to make masks we can hold over our faces for a live performance or photo shoot. I also want to get them on fabric patches that I can sew to the back of a jacket. Nostalgia is hitting with the new wave crew with this weather, as it was the time of the year we all came together. This meeting saw us seated in a circle on the fake grass on a high level of undisclosed uni with the views of the city hovering, hovering over us. 29th of the 10th, 2019. With Halloween fast approaching, I had to decide on and purchase a costume. The few ideas I had included Patrick Bateman from American Psycho, Johnny from The Shining, Morpheus from Matrix, or a glue stick. Accompanied by Neve, we trekked the local op shops where I ended up buying a black long leather jacket, purple shirt, and a green tie to be Morpheus. A prop I will add is a blue and red ecstasy and a long neck to become Morpheus Barres. For lunch, we were div divisive on hot chips and gravy from either Guest Street or Dunder Street. We put them to the test, buying both and eating them simultaneously whilst at St. Andrew's Beach, in frame. I was for Guest Street. The presentation was better for Dundas and Gravy, but the chips were better for Guest. We made an Insta poll and the local community spoke out. Dundas won by a landslide. 30th of the 10th, 2019. Today is my last day at uni. My last day of this debatably helpful course. Also my last day seeing Eddie, David and Jack seen in picture, as often. We went in to hand over our films and to polish off all the convoluted and messy assignments. There was no goodbyes to any teachers, as upon reflection, I never made any lasting relationships. 
I'm sure I will see some friendly faces walking the same halls next year. We got our last MC lunch together, where Eddie, the fat cunt, went to his hotspot, Macca's, David, the fat cunt, ordered an unreasonable amount of food, as per, and Jack, following tradition, ordered a minimum amount. We walked to Flinders Street, getting a group photo in front of a police van, and an Asian man scratching his foot. 31st of the 10th, 2019, Neve and I went to the Blagari front beach to luxuriate in the sun. I hate the before thought of going in the water. I always anticipate a lot of effort going in. Once I jumped in, I realized my irrationality. It made me crave more of this good weather and to take advantage of living on the beach. We were blessed with the presence of a ladybug, focusing our fascination on watching it crawl on us. We picked up Eliza and after locating snacks, we went to the drive-ins. It is a new tradition starting last year to go to our local drive-ins on Halloween to watch a horror film. They set up the diner with horror statues, spiderwebs, smoke and scary music all to add to the horror atmosphere. We watched Ready or Not, directed by Tyler Gillett. A fun but uninteresting film with an explosive ending. We polished off our Maltesers in popcorn, milkshakes and Lipton iced tea and recently purchased Halloween cups. 1st of the 11th, 2019. My whole morning shift I anticipated getting home so I could play my recently purchased game, Call of Duty Modern Warfare. This is all I did this day, shooting people and getting rewarded for it. 2nd of the 11th, 2019. This Saturday was dedicated to Halloween parties. At work I got dressed in my Morpheus costume, black leather long jacket, purple shirt, green tie and templess glasses. I headed to Kelsey's where she was having the rosy sec doggies around. Walked in getting hit with the nostalgia of high school house parties, beer pong, speaker, fire and jelly shots. Got to see Kelsey as an angel, Marcus as Billy Ray Cyrus, David as Ace Ventura, the Powerpump Girls as the Wings Club, and Jess as a cat. I had to leave early to get to Footscray. 3rd of the 11th, 2019. Upon getting to Footscray after midnight, I arrived at a frat looking house with a big banner with an obscure drawing followed by Footspray. Got to see Rachel as a lad hot dog, Jake a prisoner, Luth as Babushka boy, Tom as lifeguard, Maddie and Holly as B1 and B2, and Michael in a wetsuit. Taking a tour through the house, I traversed through devil's lettuce smoke, beer bottles on the ground, a DJ in the lounge room, a DJ upstairs in a bedroom, a visuals room downstairs, people on both balconies, and scatter brains all in the backyard. We boogied and got high scores at pegging. I didn't even see Emma, the host, but I appreciate her allowing everybody ravaging through her house. 4th of the 11th, 2019. With the weather being poor this day, we moved the meeting location to Tate's house. This meant a small travel time for me and the opportunity to meet his cute pug. 5th of the 11th, 2019. Today, I slept in and walked to the beach. 6th of the 11th, 2019. With today being one of my last opportunities to buy some last minute supplies for Japan, Neve accompanied my travels to Rosebud to tick some things off the list. We went from Bunnings to get batteries, to a cafe in Dramana to realize it was too windy, to Rosebud Plaza to buy socks, to our unusually large bakery to dine on everything that goes against my dietary requirements, to Chemist Warehouse to buy essentials including pads in which Neve is holding in this photo. 7th of the 11th, 2019. After finishing work, I deemed it necessary to hang with Suede, Sophie and Abby before I left. We got Chinese and bunkered in Sophie's caravan. As the rain trickled on the roof and Abby played the guitar, I sought the perfect opportunity to record a voice memo. My latest endeavor is to record a variety of different things such as conversations, questions I ask people, and ambience around me to include in the screening cut of this documentary. I urged Abby to sing, but instead I got Sophie. I asked them various questions about friendship, how to define it, what it means to them, and so on. In every white girl's dream, a popular donut eatery opened up near us, which we set as our dessert destination. In every white girl's nightmare, there was none left. 8th of the 11th, 2019. In true dedication to our friendship, Neve once again accompanied me to do some more last minute odd jobs. Once again, we had to travel to another undesirable part of the peninsula, Frankston. I pulled up to Neve's where we had to wait for a man to fix her door. As we left, and I'm talking the precise moment we left, the literal moment Neve pushed down on her accelerator to leave for Frankston, my open Sunday relaxing on her dashboard fell all on me. We got some photos developed and I bought seven rolls of film for Japan. 9th of the 11th, 2019. For my last Saturday night in Australia before I leave, I packed everything for Japan. 
This time around, I'm bringing the same duffel bag and now a man bag. Bringing a couple of books, my point and shoot, this journal, and the other necessities. 10th of the 11th, 2019. Something noteworthy happened at work. I was stepping on the inside of a bin to allow for more rubbish to fit in, and I jumped on a milk carton, which exploded on me. It was off milk. Straight after work, I headed to the McGraws, allowing me to be easily dropped off to the airport with Joel tomorrow morning. We sat around the table eating some meatballs and played our last few matches of COD. 11th of the 11th, 2019. We awoke at 4.30 a.m. with the departure of the airport at 9.20 a.m. The 10-hour flight was accompanied by watching a Euphoria episode, the movie Parasite, and getting demolished by Joel in the game Go and Battleships. After arriving and going through security, we purchased our Suica card, which is the Japanese equivalent of Mikey. We boarded a train leading to a lot of confusion having sat in a reserve seat and having an inspector making us pay an additional 500 yen, but then having to move to a separate carriage anyway to get to the right station. It was a surprise to see the same train separate to go in different paths. Unluckily, it was night so we could not watch the views outside. We walked to our hotel, The Knot. It was unsurprisingly small room, but it was well furnished. We watched all the Japanese TV, stations and all, trying to theorise the actual content. Our dinner consisted of 7-Eleven sandwiches accompanied by blood orange flavoured asahi. 12th of the 11th, 2019. Breakfast was served at the hotel with a varied choice of bakery items, myself picking the cheesy pretzel. Our first destination was the Metropolitan Government Building, where we enjoyed a 360 daylight view of Tokyo City in its observation deck. The mood was heightened by professional pianists playing in the background. Our next destination was the Akihabara district, heading to the Yodobashi Camera Shopping Center. This followed levels upon levels of technology, homeware appliances, and every purchasable item. Honorable mention, fake burger, advertised next to phone, PlayStation section, Modern Warfare 2 on PC with whack controls. We entered a multi-level arcade and played Tekken 7. We passed a retro gaming store. Ending up in Ueno Park, we rented a cycle boat and romantically rowed on a lake overlooking the city and sunset. Honourable mention, unidentified bubbles coming from underneath the water. After demolishing the street food of a fried custard tart, we admired a shrine. It informed me of my bad fortune. We walked to the Skytree building going to their 360 observation deck to see Tokyo at night. On our way there, we stumbled across a weird circular grass sculpture we could put our heads in, and the infamous golden turd. We overlooked the infinite and light-scattered skyline of Tokyo accompanied by Corona and Cheesecake. 13th of the 11th, 2019. This morning I ate a cinnamon pretzel and a croissant. Having refueled, we populated Monoto and Kodo district for more shopping areas. We went another hike to Tokyo Tower and on the way passing a Fujifilm exhibition. We bought some strange candy from Don Bijoto store, which is Japan's $2 store equivalent. Underwhelmed is an understatement for when we arrived at a Godzilla statue that is the size of me. After shamefully eating some Maccas and walking past an overpopulated light show, we went to our Book Street kart racing. Though I hated the idea of doing something so touristy, I had an enjoyable time dressing up as Piccolo, riding on a go-kart over Rainbow Bridge, getting up to speeds of 90 kilometers, riding around Tokyo Tower along busy night streets and going against every Australian road rule. 14th of the 11th, 2019. This morning saw us going to the exhibition Team Labs Borderless, where we got to experience walls decorated with weird patterns and visuals, interactive town with plush toys, drawing a fish and putting it onto a big screen, climbing lights, mirrored lamp room, and waiting too long for laying on a net and watching visuals on the roof. In between going to the next exhibition, we went on a ferris wheel in a windowed carriage, stumbling into a retro car exhibition, seeing Gundam statue and Statue of Liberty. The Team Labs Planets exhibition allowed us to experience an infinite light room, which was my favourite, actually felt like an alternate universe. A knee-deep water room with patterns on the water, big coloured balloon room and another mirrored room with patterns on the roof that made us feel like we were spinning. Upon walking back to apartment, we stumbled across a local band, busking. 15th of the 11th, 2019. My last breakfast at the Knot. I got a nut pretzel, a toasty and a custard pie. We got a coffee overlooking an actually big Godzilla statue hanging over building edge. We went to another arcade playing a mech fighting game, Street Fighter, and a DJ game. 
our next accommodation saw us moving to inner Shinjuku district. Our room is a lot more spacious and we have a deck with views of the city. We walked around the local area. We spent a while in a vinyl store where I bought a Godzilla soundtrack record, also passing a shrine that had a hundred lamps hanging over it. Buying a couple of beers, we sat on the deck consuming, chatting and admiring the busy sounds and cityscape. 16th of the 11th, 2019. Typical of a tourist, we went to the Shibuya crossing to watch an immense amount of people walk across a road. We also paid appreciation to a statue of a dog. Around lunchtime, our personal space was diminished walking through the tight street of Takeshita. We popped into a Shiba Inu cafe, sitting around many of the playful breed. Unfathomable amount of cuteness. For lunch, we went to the LSD trip destination of Kawaii Monster Cafe, a place with colourful Alice in Wonderland vibe. I got colourful spaghetti and drank the druggy experiment drink. Our night was dedicated to seeing the robot restaurant show, something I don't want to explain much, but rather advise you to go. An overload of sensation stimuli. After we went to Golden Gay, small cramped streets full of over 200 bars. Losing count after a few beers, we played pool. 17th of the 11th, 2019. Whilst eating delicioso berry pancakes at our new go-to breakfast joint, we saw a Japanese boy band performing on the street. This day of being hungover saw us limiting our activities. We went to see Joker at the cinemas with Japanese subtitles. We went to a bookstore where I bought a mech manga. 18th of the 11th, 2019. To start the day, we went to a baseball batting practice center. We played multiple games, eventually improving. We walked past a machine where you could win a butt plug. To kill some time, we went back to our apartment to watch the latest episode of Mr. Robot and Rick and Morty. In a last second decision, we went to Disneyland for the night session. Twas windier than a motherfucker and darker than one. Stopping all the shows and some of the rides, but we got to walk through the visually pleasing exhibits and go on some rides that were scarier than expected. It was Christmas themed, which got me into the spirit too early. 19th of the 11th, 2019. This day we had a Mount Fuji tour, which took us on a bus trip. On this bus trip, we had the nicest tour guide who giggled after everything she said, and she taught a lot of interesting information. We went to the highest car point on the mountain, revealing crazy views. The next part of the tour was taking a cruise and railway in Hakone. Hakone is set in the middle of mountains like a crater. On the top of Hakone, we saw disgustingly good views. Our way up saw us crammed in a carriage. A shrine placed on top gave me one of those travel tingles. A lot of the mountains had that orange maple leaf palette, something inherently aesthetic. This day reiterated my hate for American tourists. Fuck Robert and Mary. 20th of the 11th, 2019. This day saw us leaving Tokyo to head to Kyoto. We got the bullet train using our JR pass. Once we got to our apartment, we did nothing but relax and have a few beers. Kyoto is less built up and a lot more quiet. More skinny narrow streets with more localized restaurants, but still a shitload of 7-Elevens. 21st of the 11th, 2019. Our destination for today was Nara Park, a place known for its habitation of deers roaming around. We rented a bike to be able to conveniently ride around the park. It was more than just convenient though. There was something about riding a bike that made the moment so much more beautiful. It allowed us to soak in the fact that we're riding a bike in another fucking country. We purchased some biscuits, which were the deer's preferred snack. You would bow and they would bow in return to signify they want a biscuit. To signify you had none left, you would raise your hands. Otherwise they would bite at your shirt. We had a sentimental feeding session with a baby deer until an adult deer got greedy. We traveled down to a river where we saw koi fish swimming, a man feeding over 20 deers and a man painting. We got chased by a kid ghosting us on our bikes. On our way back to our apartment, we stopped at the Inari Shrine, known for its paths sheltered by many red pillars. On the walk, we stumbled across many stray cats that we followed. We got back to the apartment to try some unusual flavored beers, including strawberry and salty plum. We kept the infamous Saxman song on in the background, lasting for 5 hours and 33 minutes. 22nd of the 11th, 2019. Leaving in once again, we awoke to eventually get to our predetermined destination of Iwatayama Monkey Park. Unfortunately, we were 10 minutes too late, but at least we got to admire the small, little and cozy town you enter by walking over a bridge. With autumn leaf trees, glowing lamps, women dressed in traditional clothing, and human carried carriages came a cool town. We went through a bamboo forest to then head back to inner Kyoto. Even the train station had the aura of glowing vibes. We went to Kyoto Tower to watch the views of this town's nightlife. We looked through binoculars that makes you fear the fact you could be spied 
on at any moment. 23rd of the 11th, 2019. We checked out and killed some time waiting for check-in at our next apartment. We went through a shopping district that wasn't high-end and had stuff I was actually interested in. I ended up buying a small Venus de Milo statue figurine, Ico for PlayStation 2, and a Takashi Murakami t-shirt. We then headed to Osaka. For the night, we went to Dotonbori district. The town sat around a river. We went to a bar where we played round of pool, watched a group play a rowdy game of darts, and watched a match of skate on the TV. We headed to a video game bar, probably my favourite place we've been to. Little video game references and collector items hidden around the bar, such as a red and blue portal, some tiles, the toilet wall having images of bathrooms in different video games, and an old Nintendo 64 game box hanging on the wall. Setup was multiple TVs, each with a different retro console, or with many game cartridges you could chuck in. We played a few rounds of Mario Kart 64 and a few rounds of GoldenEye 64. On we went to a hidden room where we played the PC game Calimbro with a stranger. The game was a perfect friendship maker. Each player has to help one another solve puzzles. Each player has two characters that move at the same time. This Indonesian man was the nicest person ever. I cannot remember his name and he admitted we won't be able to pronounce it. We ended the night by playing a couple of rounds of Super Smash Bros. 24th of the 11th, 2019. For breakfast, we indulged in some traditional Japanese pancakes with a fluffy texture and a near consistency of fairy floss. They went down a treat. Today, our plan was to tick off all the main spots people tell you to visit in Osaka. Point A was a shrine with a surprisingly big lion's head. Shitanoji Shrine. Point B was an electric town where I purchased a Gundam game for PlayStation 1 and Mario Party 2 for Nintendo 64. We went to Osaka Castle, where we passed a very busy Sunday destination, walking through a ramen festival, passed a baseball match and a marching band competition. We ended up at the castle, which felt like a fortress. Point D was an aquarium, where we untraditionally ate some Wendy's. We got to take in the most insta-worthy sunset that I could not explain its beauty. The aquarium was a nice time killer, getting to see a whale shark. We got dinner at an Italian restaurant having a good chat with the owner. 25th of the 11th, 2019. Most of today was dedicated to getting back to Tokyo to spend a night closer to the airport. Our hotel was a combination of spacious and dapper, so we spent most of the night in there. I finished my last roll of film as we were on our way back to the chicken wing restaurant. This time around we avoided the spicy options, allowing us to actually taste the taste. We finished the night drinking our individual new favourite beers whilst routinely watching latest episodes of our shows. 26th of the 11th, 2019. Our last day in Japan was spent killing time before heading to the airport. Inconveniently, our flights got delayed a couple of hours, but glass half full mindset, we got to spend more time in Japan. Our planned activities included baseball, batting practice, seeing we had so much fun last time. This time around, we attempted the varying pitch speeds. We also went to the cinemas to watch At Eternity's Gate, directed by Julian Chabelle a film about Vincent van Gogh. It was a nice and poetic interpretation of his life, and I felt it did him justice. At the beginning of the film, Joel and I got worried because some of the language spoken was French, and the subtitles were Japanese, so we thought we were stuck watching a film we couldn't even understand. Luckily, it was only a couple lines of dialogue. After getting dinner, we flew out of Tokyo and headed home to Melbourne. 27th of the 11th, 2019. We finally arrived home with Joel's mum, Karen, picking us up. It was strange to hear Australian accents, and I had this new appreciation for how our towns and buildings can be perceived as completely different for foreigners. I had to wait around at Joel's for a few hours to wait to be picked up by Dad. In frame is all the stuff I brought home, all self-explanatory. A cosy feeling being able to sleep in my bed again. 28th of the 11th, 2019. My biggest priority since getting back is to develop all my film photos. In picture is the three excluding the one inside the camera. So on I went to Frankston. Having not spent time with mum for a couple of weeks, I invited her to have lunch with me whilst I waited for the film to get developed. Something I noticed when seated at a cafe in Mornington talking with mum is that our relationship has matured. We aren't necessarily closer, but I assume with age comes the openness of parents. We can talk more freely about things that would have been taboo when I was younger. I am happy with how my photos turned out. I see an improvement in my capabilities with this camera, in contrast to my photos of America. 29th of the 11th, 2019. Another priority since being back is rekindling with all my mates. Today I saw Eliza, where we arranged to get breakfast. After having breakfast at Captain's, 
we took the scenic route to Mornington blasting our oldies playlist with classics like Put Your Head On My Shoulder by Paul Anker. It was enjoyable to get into the groove, socialising, driving and op shop hopping. Tonight I watched the three and a half gangster film The Irishman, directed by Martin Scorsese with Dad. 30th of the 11th, 2019. My last priority since being back is going back to work. Though it was good to see everyone and get comments on my beard. Pictured is the back of Seclunas slash car park. Something I need to write about Saturday shifts is the snags from the old fellas over the road. The only time I like the community. 1st of the 12th, 2019. This day saw the release of New Wave Infinity's first EP, Half Moon Bay. After months of hard work for the artists and from the help of Uncle Fly to produce the tracks, the EP has now been released on all streaming services. First track, Love Girl. Second track, Like This. Third track, House Party. Fourth track, End. In celebration of this release, we had a launch party, inviting friends and family, held at Holly's. Before I went there, I got dumplings with Neve and Eliza, when Neve lost her dumplings virginity. On I went to Holly's, where I got to see the crew for the first time since getting back. We played the EP while everybody conversed and played beer pong. 2nd of the 12th, 2019. With the year coming to an end, it marks our first whole year of having New Wave public. After a lot of work being done, we thought it best to have a year in review and set goals for next year. This being an estimated long discussion, we made it a holiday meeting set at Nick's. We went over everybody's individual achievements for the year and goals for the next. A personal achievement of mine was sticking to this project and hopefully having completed it. A goal for next year is to complete a feature film script. Our next talking point was the group's accomplishments and what our current following is. Having over 20 music videos and having done over 30 gigs, our Insta has around 1,250 followers, Facebook with 1,700 likes and YouTube with 200 subscribers. We had a dinner break or heading down to the shops to dine on Greek delicacies. Our final talking point for the night was planning our structure for next year and our goals for what we want to all get done. Photo is everyone seated around table. 3rd of the 12th, 2019. My plan of action tonight was to hang out with Neve, Kira, Elise and Sydney. And with nothing to do during the day, I headed up to Melbourne early to trek Brunswick Street. I entered and exited vintage clothes and vinyl stores, holding myself back from purchases. In tradition with hanging with the girls, we ate at the Dumpling King, where I was unreasonably full from a muffin an hour ago. We proceeded to eat mother-sized cups of ice cream. Out of the blue, we decided to go see Frozen 2, directed by Jennifer Lee and Chris Buck at Lido Cinemas. In frame is all of them standing in front of the poster for the film. I hadn't seen the first one, but I watched a quick recap video. I went in with very low expectations, but came out feeling surprisingly satisfied. I LMFAO'd at some scenes and some shots looked beautiful. I've hit a point in this project where I realise my reviews are unnecessary and cringe. 4th of the 12th, 2019. Delphi and I decided to do a city day trip today. We went to National Gallery of Victoria, NGV, where we checked out the Japanese design, suffrage, and turning points exhibits. Our favourite section was the large room with a collection of 19th century paintings and marble statues. There is something about the aesthetic, the amount of detail, its perfection of beautiful skies, reflections, and its detail and meaning in the 19th century paintings. Delphi was not able to contain herself as she saw a couple of paintings from her favourite artist, Claude Monet, an artist known for his ability to capture stunning landscapes. For lunch, we headed to Brunswick Street, entered Veggie Bar, drank wine, ate 10 pieces of gnocchi for $25, went our separate ways. I had to go to Holly's where we had a business meeting with Holly's mother, Lydia, where we discussed our possible avenues as a business, ways to protect ourselves and things to do to finalise our brand. 5th of the 12th, 2019. As uni has finished up for the year, Maynard now has more free time, allowing us to hang today. We polished off some food at Captain's seated on the hairdresser chairs, allowing our conversations to vary and stay interesting. We quickly went into separate op shops, allowing us to accumulate some golf balls with the intention of hitting them off Central's due. We got to Central's back beach with Maynard's newly purchased golf club, which was a lot bigger than the one we previously had, allowing us to actually hit the fucking golf ball. Over time, Maynard got into a rhythm and fixed his technique, allowing him to hit far. I, on the other hand, could not locate a technique, allowing me to only hit a good shot every so often. Our whole afternoon was dedicated to this. 6th of the 12th, 2019. Another person I had to rekindle with after being away was Ingrid and to meet her new dog, Murphy. Still so little and cute, with big ears, very excitable, and the little nibbles of your fingers are so cute. It was funny to watch the dynamics between Murphy and her other dog, Bert, 
I could sit and just watch dogs for hours. The sighing about the little things, the little movements of the ears, their quick swap of attention to something else, how their faces can look funny on a certain angle. It's a blend of curiosity and cuteness that gives me joy. We got hot chips at Ligari, which gave me a nostalgia hit from when I was 12 to 15. Tonight, Easy Rider, 1969, directed by Dennis Hopper, was playing at Astor Theatre. Seeing as Dad was who got me to watch it a few years ago, I took him to watch it with me. 7th of the 12th, 2019. After work, I spent a bit of time finishing off the book High Fidelity, written by Nick Hornby. Definitely my favourite book I've read this year, with its themes relating to my day-to-day -day life. It's many references to music I enjoy, the immense amount of wit, it's intelligent self-awareness, it's play on words that has inspired me, it's setting of London and the many complex and funny characters. It makes me want to read more by the author. In usual manner, it's better than its movie counterpart. I began reading Call Me By Your Name, which Delphi let me borrow. 8th of the 12th, 2019. Christmas season has begun and thus the celebratory events leading up to it has begun. Every year except for the years I thought I was too cool, I headed down to the Sereno foreshore to watch the fireworks. Even though I crave to leave this town, recently coming to this I have found an appreciation for seeing the community come together and seeing all the familiar faces I have grown up with for 19 years. It's also amusing to see the younger generation. Neve has now become a nymphomaniac for dumplings after losing her dumplings virginity last week, so we ate them at the beach. Met Cassie Reed met up with us, and so we waited for the night to overcome the sky. We lounged on the rocks as we admired the explosive pyrotechnic show. 9th of the 12th, 2019. An influx of small talk boomed today, as many strangers would have said to one another. Heard it's going to reach 37 today. To be fair, they're right. The weather was the complete opposite of cold and further along the line of heat spectrum. I cooled down in my house spending time completing this project. This photo is of the family printer where I've spent multiple hours photocopying these notes to edit into the film, a very tedious and time consuming process. Arriving an hour late to the meeting as a result of a faulty and corrupt rail system, an Asian teenager sat at the table for the whole duration of the meeting so he could soak up some English words. His name was Ulf. 10th of the 12th, 2019. Jay being on holidays as well, we went to Laneway in Dramana, where I did a poor effort in finishing my waffles and iced coffee. Last time I saw Jay, slash, what he had throughout high school was long ass hair, and the madman buzzed it off. We did our huge of checking out op shops, gazing the CD racks and mocking the shirts. I found a nice billabong top from the early 2000s, which satisfied my op shop crave for a while. Unfortunately, I got stuck talking to an old creepy man for over 30 minutes, with the op shop closing, intervening, and letting me out. My personality limits my ability to get out of that situation, and Jay was trying to call me, but it was on silent. 11th of the 12th, 2019. My Christmas shopping began, and Rachel and I caught up to spend some proper time together. We went to Southland, heading into various shops, buying various people presents. We were mucking around, which led to my boost appearing on her white jeans, which led us to buying new fits at Fast Times. Together we went to Noah's where we more or less hung out with everyone, throwing the American football around while some did work. 12th of the 12th, 2019. Eliza and I are now in the tradition of doing Christmas activities together since last year. Tonight we travelled from Bayside area to Mornington to Frankston and a bit of the peninsula to watch Christmas lights. We googled popular houses around those areas that put a lot of effort into their lighting and decorations. Some were so decent, you could walk through a backyard full of coloured flashing lights, perfect for when on drugs. Christmas related decorations and windows with mini towns inside. Yet some places were turd featuring only single strips of LED lights. 13th of the 12th, 2019. Neve, Cassie and I headed to Frankston to finalise our Christmas shopping for our friends and family. We bought Eliza a bundle of stuff including a friend's TV show towel, beauty stuff and so on. 14th of the 12th, 2019. Tonight, I headed up to Phillip Island for Neve, Ronan and Aaron's 21st. They rented an Airbnb for the weekend, with the neighbour's kid playing at Kahoot. This night for them was a recovery night, as they all had a big one last night. I got to see Kira, Elise, Sydney, Sam and Lewis as well. We played some pool and had the stereotypical Aussie night in sitting around the table with the UE Boom, UE boom playing, drinking beers and smoking bongs. I got Neve a new Rex Orange County vinyl and a car dashboard bobblehead. Most of us went to bed early. Ronan tried skating on pool table. 15th of the 12th, 2019. Accomplishing and surviving work, I took advantage of this weather by going to McRae Front Beach to have a picnic with Suede, Abby, and Sophie, later accompanied by Maynard, who attempted to teach me how to dive. 
We ate as the colors of the sky etched into my mind and reflected the warmth of this moment. 16th of the 12th, 2019. Tonight's meeting saw us all in agreement that we should all have a two week break from New Wave. We are all burning out due to how much we've all been working, making content where we deserve a break and to be full form for next year. I hate PTV did not get home till 1.30 a.m. because of replacement buses. 17th of the 12th, 2019. I dedicated this day to beginning my narration for this film. Shout out Noah for letting me have his microphone. I've realized this is going to take a long time because there is over 500 pages of writing I have to record. It doesn't help that it takes a while to perfect saying my words aloud. I often stutter and have to redo it. Also can't get over my voice. My process is as follows. Say date, record one page at a time, repeat until perfect, and repeat this for every day. 18 of the 12th, 2019. In the scorching heat of degrees over 40, I head to Chapel Street where my plans fell through. So instead, I sat in a cafe and cooled down with a nice latte and walked around Chapel Street looking for more presents. Rachel picked me up and we went to Noah's where a music meeting was going on. All I did was sit in the cool interior, rest and converse. 19th of the 12th, 2019. The post arrived today from Olivia Black's new art insta, Femi Sketch. A hand-drawn portrait of a woman with luscious large hair. I went to Portsea Hotel with my parents for a pre-birthday dinner and drink. I watched one of my favourite films for the year, Uncut Gems, directed by the Safdie brothers. 20th of the 12th, 2019. Today is the day I was born 20 years ago. Today is the day this film goes from 19 and 19 to 20 and 19. Today is the day I leave my teenage years, where I enter what is now arguably my adult years. Youth is now not a trait, and maturity is now an obligation, where high school years are now a distant memory and full-time jobs are a necessity. I find it solemn leaving my teenage years where it feels like I'm leaving the joyful and carefree times, though I can appreciate how much of my life I still have ahead of me and I can see the benefits of being an adult. I hope I can find ways to slow down my 20s and to accept my responsibilities, where I now need to turn my dreams into a sensible and concrete f future. I'm lucky that I feel that I have already matured in the past year, that I don't feel fear in having to change too much and adjust to adult life. I do fear that I'll now become overwhelmingly harsh on my unproductiveness at the days where I'm not doing anything. Memories will now drift away, allowing for what I perceive will be less interesting ones. One thing I'm grateful for is my ability to feel nostalgic. It gives me meaning to this milestone. These are just reflective thoughts. None of this went through my head today as I was distracted by seeing friends and the hot weather. I went and got breakfast with Rose and went up to Aaron's to cool down in his pool, something you can't appreciate enough. The hot weather put me off so much I went home to stay in my cool house. 21st of the 12th, 2019. Jay and Ruby for their 20th had people come around to theirs, inviting a few old high school friends. The night consisted of playing ball, mini breaking a window, a failed attempt at playing drinking games, beer pong, and so on. Some dumbass took multiple photos on my camera. 22nd of the 12th, 2019. As summer hits, an increase of tourists come down to the peninsula, majority being wankers and dickheads. In Sorrento, there is an influx in older, rich white people coming down to their expensive holiday houses with their Range Rovers, which are apparently allowed to break road rules. Traffic becomes ingested, annoying voices talking about their golf this morning become audible, and rude customers become ever so present as the hot weather comes. This is every local's end to the year, and I get to experience the full extent working at an expensive fruit shop, where I still get to hear complaints of high prices, even though they can probably afford to pay off rape allegations, and get to experience a lack of understanding of common decency and manners. At least I got to come home to my lava lamp, which Rachel and Nick bought me for my birthday. 23rd of the 12th, 2019. For Christmas Eve Eve, a yearly event happens at the Portsea pub, where majority of the locals go to. The day began with Delphi coming over to mine, where she gave me an, an altruistic amount of presents, ranging from books to CDs to the wittiest t-shirt. We headed to Pages, picking up Neve and Lockie Stevens on the way. We had a few pre-drinks, a few laughs, I got to see Alana since she got back from the Navy, got to see Paige's dog all grown up, and I got to suss her front yard, which I hope to use for this screening night. I got picked up by Sophie, where she gave me a present, which unveiled to be a book about cult filmmakers. We headed back to mine where we awaited for Suede and Maynard so we could have prees and get some insta-worthy photos in my backyard. After finally arriving at Portsea, I saw too many familiar faces and drank too many beers where they ended up cancelling each other out. 24th of the 12th, 2019. Christmas Eve being a tradition, our family follows acts associated with it. 
This includes setting up the Christmas tree with its ornaments, lights, and presents bundled around it, putting food on a plate to place on the roof to feed Santa's deers, and putting a food and drink on a plate next to the tree for Santa. The older we get, the more pointless these things are, especially not being religious, but there's something still sentimental about it. The older we get, the more we take the piss out of it, where you can see Dad fed Santa beer. 25th of the 12th, 2019. December the 25th, the year Jesus was born, but more importantly, the day you get presents. This morning I helped make breakfast, received and handed out presents to my parents and dined at our table eating eggs benedict. Around lunchtime we met up with some of the O'Learys at my uncle Damien's house, getting to see Marty, Michael, Kyle and Sean. Relatives are humans I rarely get to see living so far away, so I appreciate days like this bringing us together to catch up on so many topics. Sean is nearly surpassing me in size. For dinner, I headed with Rose and her boyfriend, Jane and Hutchins, to our auntie Catherine and uncle Morris's house to see the cherry side of the family. Here I got to see aunties, uncles, many of cousins, family friends, and importantly, my grandparents, Nani and Pa. It was special to see them and talk to them about my travels this year and aspirations and to hear their fulfilling stories revolving around these topics. Every time I see them, it motivates me to see them more often because it can be easy to forget how influential they are to me. Afterwards, Jade and Rose and I went back to her new house in Safety Beach. In frame. 26th of the 12th, 2019. Christmas being so intertwined with Eliza and I's relationship, we caught up on Boxing Day for breakfast. She got me a So Fresh Christmas hit CD and I got her a bundle of stuff. We went into Laneway in Dramana and went for a walk on Dramana Foreshore before we both had to depart for work. 27th of the 12th, 2019. After finishing work today, I did some final packing for the Beyond the Valley Festival. I put all my bedding, food, and so on into Lockie Huxtable's car to prepare for our early departure tomorrow. We organized our ways of sneaking alcohol in. 28th of the 12th, 2019. First day of Beyond the Valley begun with waking up at 5.30 a.m. to allow us all to depart and arrive at Lardner Park to avoid the big ass line. My crew for the festival this year included Neve, Annabelle, and Lockie Huxtable. Shout out Lockie for driving. We got to the festival at around eight, still being amongst a line. We went through the car search where they made us take literally everything out of the car and then take everything out of everything. Luckily though, they only found one cruiser which they mocked us for. We also had a jar of mangoes and peaches which was full of vodka, which the security opened, saw the lid wasn't attached, smelt, then expressed his dislike for peaches and then put it back. Annoyingly, seeing as we were one of the first there, we got put at the back corner. We were situated next to a group of older boys who we combined our gazebo and tables together. We pretty much just walked around the venue and got drunk at our camp this night. We went to Nick's camp for a bit with all those fellas where we made a doof stick using a gym mat. 29th of the 12th, 2019. Today, I caught up with Lockie Glover and all the boys for a bit. I went to dance tent and boogied to I don't know which artist when I stumbled into Thomas Tomasello, an old friend I haven't seen in Yonks. We had a wild afternoon together going on the ferris wheel and getting married. I caught up with my crew and went to Dr. Dan's dance tent for a bat boogie. For the end of the night, I watched Skepta live, where I only got around the song, It Ain't Safe. 30th of the 12th, 2019. Third day of BTV was a torturous day in terms of weather. It became extremely hot early, forcing us out of bed. Ice had run out at the stores and we were running off minimal esky water. High winds added to the challenge, forcing us to lower our gazebos and stay in the shade majority of the day. Later on, we went to Kelsey and all those girls camp where we had praise for Matt Corby, an artist I dislike. We sat bothered in the heat watching Matt, Claptone and Mulrat. Annabelle and I went back to our tent for some mango vodka. We caught up with Nick and we proceeded to watch one of the best things I've ever witnessed in my life and the only set I was looking forward to this whole festival, Tyler the Creator. My excitement and happiness whilst watching the most entertaining and visually pleasing performances was unfathomable. Annabelle said she's never seen me so happy. Afterwards, I caught up with my Japan buddy Joel, where we spent a few hours having a rapid DNM. We went to Nick's camp for a bit, seeing Rachel and all the boys talking about rats. 31st of the 12th, 2019. My last day of BTV was my least eventful. I went to Mini and all those boys camp, which was on the complete other end of the venue. Later, we attempted to play drinking games at the girls' camp, also using snorkels and hanging with the losers camping next to them. Went with some of the girls to watch Hayden James at the main stage, or at least attempt to watch, as being small allows you to only see the back of people. We watched Rufus to Soul for the New Year's countdown, where we all smooched each other to celebrate. 
the year transitioned to 2020, the start of new decade. This called for going to bed. The rest of now what happens in my life is irrelevant to this project. Which brings me to the end of this year-long experiment. 365 photos and nearly 600 pages of writing later, and I have accomplished the biggest project in my life. Ignoring the fact that I need to edit it all together. Started at BTV and finished it at BTV. Creatively, my most fulfilling year. Phys physically, another stagnant year. And mentally, my toughest year. My biggest accomplishment that is noteworthy is completing this project and how much I've strengthened my relationship with friends and family. I'm finding it hard to reflect as I feel there is so much to say and I want to make it as sentimental as possible. But I want to turn this to the viewer, the person who has finished watching this. To the three different types of finishers. The cheaters who skip to the last day specifically, my close friends who I made this project for to show my appreciation and who have stuck it out, and the older me re-watching. To all different types, I hope you've gotten something out of this, mainly a smile or remembrance of a memory you had forgotten about. I still haven't come to any understanding on why I truly wanted to do this. I have an inkling it was selfish reasons, but no matter what it was, I appreciate the per perceptible things I've gotten from this. It's pushed to make me do something meaningful most days, to force to look at the bright side of all my days and all my friends, to apply rules and boundaries to this project, which have helped me apply this to things like my morality and so on. I could write for pages and pages, so I'll come to an end. A final goodbye to the viewer and a final thank you. A final goodbye to being 19 in 19.